Hi, how's it going? <laughs> How is everybody doing? I'm Godless Sewing. This is the Godless Sewing channel. I hope everyone is doing well. It's another beautiful day here in Southern California. Well, that's kind of a lie because it was overcast. But, you know, <laughs> that storm is headed Phoenix's way. How is everyone doing? How are you, Commander? Oops. I'm doing okay. Um, obviously, got a new video out. That orc head is actually based on the, it looks like a real oh. Coke boot and flat earther. And, well, if you stay to the end, you'll get the punchline. Do you know one day I will figure out how many phones I have in this room? Apple. I blame Apple. Apple technology. <laughs> how are you, Phoenix? I am doing a-okay. It's been a Monday, but aren't they always? And yeah. You know, it's funny how Monday's gonna Monday. Hey, Alibaba. Monday sat. <laughs> Do you think that like there was like a, a meeting where people were like, you know what, Mondays are just gonna suck? Or is it because Monday always follows our, you know, the Sabbath where everybody takes the day off? Well, I think that's it. And before Christianity, then Sunday sucked because that was after everyone took the fucking day off. <laughs> I work on the weekends, so I need a day off. Like Monday, like um, from Phoenix's stream on, that is my Friday. That's like when I, those are my days off. <laughs> so I'm a little bit more cheery on Mondays than people should be. I mean, but, people actually need a day off. Even in the Soviet Union, at least for those not in gulags, there was one day off a week. And that whole thing was an inhumane shit show that should never happen again. Not the days off, the Soviet Union. <laughs> Eat me my days off. Do you know, my, uh, my parents... When they started running their business, they um, never showed up for a Friday again. It was, it was the most awesome thing. And my dad looked at me. He was like, no, I've earned this. I will never come to work on a Friday again. And they didn't. So they took every Friday off. Hey, Water Nay. That's awesome. Okay, one more, but I think sometimes, like, like, because at my job, people literally pass away at their desk. So it's important to take some days off. We will give you PTO. You will get a hug <laughs> where I live. Like, it's important to take a day off. How's everybody? How is everybody? I'll let everybody get in before um, I try. Hold on. Let me get my hands on my hip, Waternay. Hold on. I try. I try here at the House of Sewing. <laughs> I try. What's the Putty Tat's name? Oh, this is Loki. <laughs> Living up to his name. A bit of mischief, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yes. When I saw them at this in the special room at the shelter, they were Mary and Joseph, except their brother and sister. And I said, oh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> It was Christmas time, but <laughs> so his sister's name is Freya. She's the little short haired black and white one. And Loki, yeah, he does live up to his name. He's he's a very special boy. <laughs> Let me tell you, he is a big floofy cat. He is all floof, has extra thumbs, hates to get his nails done, and doesn't like to be brushed. So we have all the long haired cat problems at my house. And some I haven't, I've chosen not to not mention because oh, it's a good thing I love him. <laughs> Animals are funny that way. I have adopted half of the neighborhood. And since my garage door is open because it's a be semi-beautiful evening, anyone in my neighborhood, if you're listening to this, I've probably adopted your cat. You know, your, cat, your cat, their cats have adopted you. Get, you got to get it straight. Like that, That's not how this works. <laughs> I feel like I have a health condition I don't know about. And the cats are like, we must protect this human. 
Oh. Well, you're feeding them, so they <laughs> will absolutely love you for feeding them. Yep, yeah, feeding them is the condition. <laughs> No, but I've been keeping my eye out. There are two new little four-month-old kittens who I, or I, they look four months old, r- wandering around the neighborhood. So you got you got a special a big name when you move, if you move into the house. But the outside cats, it's like marbles, muffins. But the two new ones, I have an Earl Grey and Ginger <laughs> Snaps. Earl Grey <laughs> Ginger Snaps. Well, she Ginger Snaps is orange and white striped and super floofy. And Earl Grey is gray with black stripes and super floofy. <laughs> so. One does not control the cat. The cat does what it wants, whatever it wants. <laughs> yes, especially if you feed them. Yeah, they love me. They love me. Do you know anything about uh, Singer Merit 96? Oh, wait, let me look it up. Let me... Um, do you know what's so funny? I Google so many sewing machines that I type the word Singer in my phone and <laughs> machines you, instantly... You start run. S and it's like, and we must yeah. <laughs> Not J for Juki or Janome. <laughs> the Merit... Because I might have the machine or it's cousin, brother, or something, and it's... Uh, in, in that realm. Nine, six. Even without my glasses on. Oh, vanity. Oh, vanity. Oh, this is so <gasps> true, Kilroy. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I have that machine. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. Go ahead. I was just... Um, Kilroy, cats are worse were worshipped as gods in ancient Egypt and they have not forgotten. No, my old lady Bubasti, who was named after Bast, the goddess of cats, she definitely knew that she was royalty. Oh, the last of a generation that one was, my sweet, floofy girl. If you give me a second butterfly, I may or may not have that in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to look. <clears throat> As a general rule, the older ones are better. They're just better built. Like, like even the sewing machines in the 70s or 80s that are plastic are better built than ones that are nowadays. Thank you. I'm just extremely vain. That's what it is. And you know what the funny thing is? Every male in my family wears their glasses. But before we get too far, hold on, hold on. Before the party starts... You know what the funny thing is? I don't have to be like this. Here at the Godless Sewing Channel, this program is inten- This program is for entertainment purposes only. And the content is not intended to malign any religion, race, company, individual, or wigs. All opinions expressed by Godless Sewing and the program participants are solely their personal views and do not reflect the opinions on every human being on the planet. And if you do not like that, we have exits on both sides. And in Spanish, that's Ama izquierda and derecha. I hope everybody enjoys flying Godless Sewing Airlines. I thank you. <laughs> and I cried about it yesterday. We lost. The Kings lost. I'm rooting for um, any Canadian team at this point. <laughs> I'm talking about hockey. <laughs> I bought one off of, off Goodwill Online. I wanted. I just wanted the case. I will donate the machine. <laughs> They're pretty hit or miss machines. They are pretty hit or miss machines. Oh, that's funny. What kind of case? I am so curious because I do that sometimes. Like I'll buy something just because the case fits a a, a better machine. I would recommend a Merit over a modern one. However, I would recommend several older singers before the Merit. So are you guys ready for the plethora of holidays today? So, how do you um, pronounce it? Um, Beltane? Phoenix, Bel- or Beltane. Beltane. <laughs> Today is um, Couple Appreciation Day. And I just wanted to say, you guys are so appreciated. Get out of here, says the single guy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I am kidding. <laughs> Executive Coaching Day. Frequent Flyer Day. Global Love Day. 
I'm gonna say right off the bat, um, we need that we need more Global Love Day. Great Lakes Awareness Day. <laughs> Does anyone live near the Great Lakes and do they have awareness? Like around here, our we don't have water anymore, so people literally stopped going to the recreation areas. It's really sad. No, the Great Lake. Well, I guess if I drove a good distance, I could get there in a reasonable amount of time, but I don't like to live on it. It's not a convenient distance. And regularly, my job requires me to pick stuff up or drop it off in Buffalo. God, Buffalo. I've been to Buffalo. I've been to Buffalo before. I saw a hockey game there. It was actually I had a good time. Beautiful people in Buffalo, New York. I've been to, to Manhattan too, and it was the scariest place I've ever been in my life. <laughs> there, there, I saw a rat steal a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's saying a lot coming from where you live. <laughs> 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 Still to this day, Portland, Oregon is the place where I've seen a real war rat. I thought people were just telling stories, but I saw a real one. <laughs> Today in history, Osama, Osama bin Laden was shot by SEAL Team 6. That was not on the list. They sure did not put that one on the list. The case stands up and the whole site opens to reveal the machine. Awesome. Very cool. It's going, it's going to get jazzed up for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love, I live sort of case to, oh, I live sort of close to Great Lake, Ontario. No, don't dox yourself. I'm really good at geography. It's a, it's a pretty big lake. I know, I know, I know. It touches the U.S. and Canada. <laughs> and there's only one Great Lake that is exclusively controlled by America. Lake Michigan. There's that new old lake in California. Oh my gosh, if no one has seen what's happened to Lake Mead, it, it, it just makes you want to cry. And it shows that the mafia really was chucking people into the river. <laughs> in the I know, 60s. but Lake, oh, lake Shasta is almost full, so that's pretty impressive. That is true. We've, we've had a really impressive year this year as far as rain and, and all of that. So it's going to be interesting. Yes. I'm yes, hoping I... Lake Powell doesn't go away. That's actually a family lake. <laughs> I did butterfly. I It disgorged the bobbin mechanism and I cleaned it off, stuck it back on the little fork pieces and she ran great. We're just taking a break tonight because I don't feel like so. I, I'm doing stuff just not at the machine tonight. <laughs> I made sure to line my vest before the stream started. So I had actual progress on my vest. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing this thing. And you know what? I did buy this from a store and someone probably made 10,000 of these. And I thank the person. Are those some little wire things? flowers that, um, no, they're made out of like wire and a little bit of fabric or plastic. Are those this flowers is, on there? This is a plank of um, something. I think it's a plank of cheap wood or something. I got this from my 99 cent store. So everything comes from China. Everything. And so this is like just a piece of wood, a piece of fabric with another, just with the, um, it's just edged. I don't even think oh, anything is. Oh, it's a pin cushion. There. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, and I should have made one. And Phoenix rightly um, shamed me for not making my own. Because <laughs> mine's sitting right here somewhere in my and table of despair. <laughs> this thing has changed my life with my sewing. It has changed my life. I, I need another one for this hand because I'm, I'm weirdly ambidextrous. I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with the Sultan Sea. They think there's a ton of lithium under there. So if there, if it dries out, there's going to be a ton of mining. Humans are terrible. We are terrible. Oh, good. Yeah, there's, gonna... there's a huge problem with like disturbing that settlement sediment because the Sultan Sea has also been collect 
injecting pesticides and assorted um, shit <gasps> that when it's becoming airborne, it's poisoning people. Oh, wow. Oh, that's crazy. It's hey, an Mark environmental Short. disaster. As a species, we are an, an environmental disaster. Water and I, that's awesome. Lately, I've been seeing more um, white rotaries than I've been seeing like classic singers. So people may, I think people know their value nowadays. <laughs> I'm back. There was a guy sleeping by the train tracks that looked a bit dead, but he's okay. Oh, good old Portland. You know, Liz, you should write um, billboards for Portland. I've seen plenty of wharf rats back when I worked in the fishing industry. We used to shoot with an air rifle. I worked on a farm where they did the same thing with um, Ruger 1022s. Like, rat, like they get huge. If they don't have anything, um, if they don't have any natural predators, they get cat size. They're. <laughs> I'm not a fan of rodents. I'm not anyone who's worked in a farm setting will just. They're awful. We need to figure something out that doesn't involve raping and pillaging the planet. I agree. And, you know, and and I say this all the time. And back when I used to stream, people hated when I would say this, but I like. Um, we're trash monkeys. We're like our species. If you really like, what are we? What do we do? We produce trash and we're great apes. We are trash monkeys. <laughs> Yay. Hey, Mark. There's going to be a problem with the mining lithium. It takes a lot of water to extract it. Yikes. Yikes. You know what, Kilroy, the Portland I lived in was weirdly, maybe it's just because I, I habitually mind my own business, but I would like go read by the river. I would walk, like, I would smoke a J and walk into the movie theater. Like, this was also 24 years ago. <laughs> 23, yeah, like 23 years ago. It was a different planet. The world was happier than. We weren't all at each other's throats of a bullshit. <laughs> Jerry Springer was still alive. Oh, uh, do you know, um, I, uh, Jerry Springer weirdly reminds me of my dad. My father was in an industrial accident in the 90s, and it, he got um, his hands and face, all the skin completely burnt off of his face. And um, he looked at me one day. He was like, hey, man, if you're just going to ditch and wander around, you can come home and hang out. And so my dad and I, we watched um, Jerry Springer for like a year and a half while he was recovering. That's back when they really fought each other. So I, I almost shed a tear when Jerry Springer passed away. Jerry Springer's Jerry. show was pushing the envelope of what was seen as acceptable. I know, and all that stuff is like normal and being pushed is like super normal now. He's like the king in the coal mine. Sorry, everybody forgets that Jerry, they passed a law so that people couldn't fight on TV anymore. Jerry Springer, like, changed television. And look at, t look at people now scrapping on every show, you know? Oh, I'm so mad. You know, I just saw my signal cut out, and I called the company today, and they promised that wouldn't happen. And here we are. <laughs> Good riddance to Jerry Springer always hated his show. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch it. And my then when I got old enough to watch it, I didn't want to. <laughs> he... Jerry Springer, like, I don't know. Does anyone ever remember? I was a sick kid, so I stayed home a lot. Does anyone ever remember Richard Bay, the Richard Bay show? Or um, Jenny Jones? Sally Jesse Raphael? Yeah, that one. The, they all, the, they the all were trash. <laughs> they were all trash. All of those shows. <laughs> um. I didn't watch it. I just remembered Sally. Oh, and my, Phil Donahue. Um, I, I, I loved Donahue. Donahue actually had real comprehensive um, like issues on there. He would bring on the Nation of Islam. He would bring on the KKK. He had on like um, Khalil Muhammad, who started like the New Age Black Panther Party, who was later assassinated. Phil Donahue had like real people on his show. My um my pops was in the navy water night and he was like 
my he was a weird dude. My dad like he liked uh, loud pipes, loud cars. Like he wasn't into sports, but he loved muay thai and kickboxing. Anything he'd witnessed in person, I guess you know. He hated sports, Whenever but he loved I UFC. <laughs> Whenever I think of Phil Donahue, I think of Leslie Nielsen wearing glasses, throwing up in a tuba. Naked gun <laughs> 33 and a third. Oh, those were those were good movies. Those were good movies. I miss all of those old those old um I miss all that. Because I was home a lot as a kid and I was sick, like I would watch uh, Mama's House, Good Times, like all of those old TV shows. Um, Sanford and Son, that's why I'm obsessed with it. And that was 10 years before my time, you know? I remember I see- Esther said that her name was biblical. And then Fred says, and you know what else? You was in the Bible too. Samson slew the Philistines with your jawbone. <laughs> You know, every time you bring up the flying nun um, butterfly, it reminds me of I meant Sally Fields. She is a champion for people with special needs. I will be weeping when she, when the is she still around? I don't know. I don't even want. I don't want to misquote, but I met her um, right around the time my son was born. She she's a champion for anyone who can't speak for themselves. She's a good human. Now I have the San Francisco team in my head. They play it at nauseum in LA. It is on every other channel here. It's really weird. I weirdly have Zap and Roger stuck in my head because I was rocking out before the stream. Do da um da da da. Do you guys watch television, or is that just a thing for dinosaurs? Uh, I, I watch YouTube. <laughs> I, I watch Hulu. I don't usually put like the regular TV on. Like right now, I have the um, the Rangers and the Devils playing, and I have um, Kirk and Spock going on my um, my VCR combo over there. But I have it. I'm half showing it because YouTube's been really hardcore lately. But I feel like I'm a dinosaur because um, I still watch cable television. This is a dinosaur meetup. I um, I still have a record player and a tape player <laughs> that work. I always wondered um, if people watch TV anymore. I read books instead of certain instead of watching certain shows, but I still um, watch um, a lot of television. I mean, don't get me wrong. I watch a crap ton of, like, stuff. It's just not TV. <laughs> but I hate <laughs> commercials. So, <laughs> Do you think we've graduated from, like, okay, the um, networks are telling us what we want to watch, and now we can watch whatever we want to, but it's basically based on the same principle, or, or no? I do like having the control and not having to be force-fed. Though, I mean, I mean shoot, who am I to talk... Right now we're finishing up like Manifest on Netflix. So it's not like we're not even not watching stuff. I, just... I stopped watching TV because of the anxiety political commercials induced. I'll tell you, I do not go on Facebook um, during any election. I don't go on. I really go on it anymore anyways because it's just a knife fight. But I stay away from Facebook because... I am friends with all from people from all walks of life, and they all want me to vote for their their. Um, that's crazy, Kilroy. That's about how long it's been since I've seen The Simpsons. <laughs> Actually, One of my mom's years. friends. Got, I'm sorry. Oh no, no, please go ahead. One of my mom's friends actually got pissed with us and unfriended us because he was putting all these like very um, unsavory Trump things up. So I made a little video and I posted it telling the story about how I was responsible for the creation of safe spaces at the community college. I made a video of Barack Obama behaving in the way that Pat Robertson wished Trump would. And then I created a montage of Trump behaving in a way 
that Pat Robertson wished Obama would. And then I got video of Jerry Falwell Jr. talking about how Christians can't support socialists. Then I got a, a national socialist. Then I got the video of the president of the National Socialist Party endorsing Donald Trump. And then I played that right in the cafeteria of the community college with a projector and a screen. And then you know what happened with that. And oh, the yeah. guy said, <laughs> he was like, you did that. But it was like, you you were you were so offensive, you required a, they made a safe space because you trolled people, but you trolled the wrong people. So he, um, he basically cut ties. You know, I have fallen into these really myopic um, communities on YouTube, and it's really funny how people will be on polar opposites of uh, um, issue, but they all have the same problem. Human beings just love to debate and fight each other, I think. Like, we're I think we, we are. And because we're able to think beyond ourselves, we, we know what peace is. It's an ideal. It's like, hey, I want peace. But then we find peace and then, oh, I'm bored and go fight another human. It's the strangest thing to me. And um, really quickly, um, I find it strange that people don't watch TV anymore. Butterfly Butterfly doesn't watch TV. Uh, Waternay. I agree with what you're saying, though, because it does warp people's mind. I thought it was really arrogant how the candidates um, back in the day would start running like four or five months before it was time to vote. They're like, okay. Ross Perot and uh, Bob Dole are running. <laughs> Pick through these guys. 24-7, 365. And um, probably one of the reasons why we're so divided is when they mixed religion and politics. They took people's enjoyment of religion away. They created a rivalry and... It's just like if you have one child that you never discipline and one child that you always hate, you create eventually create two monsters. That is true. I just find I, I am am I like is peace unobtainable? And and I'm talking about like because I have peace in my everyday life. Like I fall asleep sometimes. It's so peaceful. Even at the office, it's so quiet and peaceful. I'm like, oh, this is a life. <sighs> <laughs> you know. Well, pe peace comes from, to a certain extent, not giving a shit about what your neighbor does with other consenting adults and just growing up and, you know. I agree with you. I agree. It, it, not so seeking it goes back out drama. So it goes back to what my mom used to tell me about not being nosy and minding your own business. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, my own person, I, I was raised not to talk about that stuff. You know, you things went on between adults behind closed doors and that was everyone's own business and you didn't talk about things like that and you minded your own damn business and you had peace same but everyone i was raised around had advice looking at as an adult now i'm like oh they were all telling the kids to mind their own business because every single person had advice if it wasn't drinking or you know or something you know <laughs> I agree. I want to discuss without hating on someone just because of the, it. Absolutely. I think there has to be, there has to be a middle ground somewhere. That That's my, that's my whole point. It's just, it seems like people are so myopic nowadays that we can't have conversations anymore. I, I think there is a segment of the population that is like that, but I also feel like the mainstream legacy corporate media plants these seeds to cause people to have, be stuck in their feelings on certain hot button issues and if they could step back they'd realize like most people are in the middle of the bell curve it's just yeah. they're purposely trying to keep us divided so that they can keep their thumb down on everybody the 
big oh. multinational George Soros WEF <laughs> bullshit. Well, there, like, there's another thing too. It's well, I don't know about Soros, but to give you an idea of dividing people, it was in Nevada. And you had a Democrat holding positions that I no longer hold anymore, but they were socially conservative. And then you had that Democrat running against the owner of the Bunny Ranch. And people were being <laughs> thrown out of church for refusing to vote for the pimp. And that is divisive because, you know, like, I gave Christianity a shot. And I figured out there was no forgiveness in that religion for someone like me because I didn't believe in the trickle-down theory and they invented a definition of socialist that could apply to Sarah Palin. So you're <laughs> guaranteed to find a socialist if the definition you're using can apply to your damn vice presidential nominee. And um, I didn't like listening to people tell me that I was just like the people who tried to slaughter my mom's parents in the old country for recycling ideas from Kennedy and Johnson. Isn't it funny? And they'll, they, people do recycle ideas and then blame you for it. Um, what, water day, I grew up in a, in a very confrontational, um, environment where I'm from. You have to know how to fight verbally and physically. And it was a shock to me to go into the real world and realize that adults do not solve their problems this way. So I think it's a fundamental issue too, because I was raised in a very confrontational environment. You know, and there are a lot of people who do not know how to do, how to discuss certain terms, especially the emotional ones, without um, physically getting in someone's face or trying to impose their will on that person. You know, humans, we're trash monkey. <clears throat> I think there's 70 to 80 of us of quiet people who just want to live their lives. And there's 20 to 30 extremely loud. I agree. I agree. I think that's what it is, too. Because I'll never forget when Ben Shapiro was was um, had that plank of wood in the bag at, at Home Depot, and I was like, "Dude, that's twenty minutes from my house." <laughs> and I wanted to tell people like where I'm from, people do not agree with Ben Shapiro. He just happens to live around here. I'm so happy he moved to Florida and out of my area. <laughs> this conservative area was not conservative enough for him. I think a lot of people get bamboozled. I saw I saw a guy at a Republican town hall. He listed all the things he wanted and asked the Republican representatives what what he was going to do about it. I agree. People do get bamboozled or they think just because of the party they're in that they blindly go with every single thing. I'm telling you, oh, that's the dumbest thing in the world. Oh, yeah. I go issue by I live. I live in a demo um, where I live. It's liberal heaven. I go issue by issue, issue by issue on everything, even the judges. And recently, I always see this like, oh, research the judges that you vote for and everything. And guess what? I did. I voted for a certain judge and I went in front of that person and they told me to have a good day because I'm an upstanding human. <laughs> so my. <laughs> well, you got to be careful with these elected judicial figures, though. What is it? Um, is it in Kansas City or whatever, that Kim Gardner lady who didn't even show up to her own bad act, like that's a whole weird and like at least half the prosecuting office is resigned for bad dealings, something it, that's a whole weird thing. And I think to your you, oh, last um to the last um thing that you had up on screen, that is a problem. You have all these people who in the before Reagan, their families used to be Democrats, but um, mm -hmm. then they became Republicans. So, and in like 2004, 2005, 2006, Howard Dean went after those people. And then basically they've been raised to think that the Democrats are demonic and they want to take your God and your guns and then they push people out of church. They treat people like crap. They create the division. But like the Democrats used to own the South. It's just 
the Southern racist Democrats and all that. Oh, Strom Thurmond? Strom Thurmond was a hardcore Democrat. Aw, oh, when they impeached um, Bill Clinton, they had to bring the oldest member of the House, and Strom Thurmond was Republican, and he had been there since, like, Alexa, how long did Strom Thurmond serve in the House of Representatives? From History.com, Strom Thurmond, who served in the United States Senate for a record 46 years, dies on this day in 2003. Did that answer your question? Alexa, thank you. Thanks for your feedback. And I oddly am talking about the man on the day he passed. <laughs> so today is Strom Thurmond Day. He served 46 years. He switched, he switched sides when they weren't allowed to be racist anymore. <laughs> yeah, that was probably 40 years too many, though. I think these, like, career politicians, this pol I think there's a problem with it. I agree. Didn't you say that yesterday in your stream that we should have caps on I think there should be term limits. Yeah, I, I was discussing this with my human, like, maybe six years for the house and eight, like, no more than ten years. You get out of touch and... Then there's that corporate government revolving door that's mm -hmm. also super, un I don't like it. <laughs> Look at what happened to just in my state, um, Diane Weinstein, um, what's her name? Uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris, they stole, <coughs> they sold the state of California. They sold our state to a giant corporation. And Newsom's not doing the greatest job himself. I mean, he's doing a great job if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> we I, I think we do need term limits because we've created dictators um i feel like that even with our police officers they do not know the law they do not know the law like people get so mad at um the cops and everything we need to better better educate our police officers so that they don't put themselves in precarious situations especially in a place where i live where we have laws for everything every interaction there is a law I think it's okay to have a political career, like go from mayor to representative to senator, but spending half a century in the same office is too much. Teddy Roosevelt spent his entire adult life as president of the United States of America. There's a law. Because of him, we literally passed a law where you can only serve two terms because he was a president three times. <laughs> that was Franklin Roosevelt. It was, it was FDR? It was FDR? Yeah, and they did that. Well, in his case, it would have been good, but other people, you know, like, can you imagine George Bush having a third term or um, Donald Trump being able to, you know, it, it gets to the point where someone becomes so goddamn powerful, they could become a dictator. It doesn't mean they will. I agree. They could. But, like, I'm going to tell you flat out, like, anyone who knows me, like, politically, he was a president like anybody else. But if I ever met Barack Obama, I would cry and be like, why can't you serve a third term? I was a total Barack Obama. Homer. Actually, they, but he was a they terrible can president. serve a half a term. They can serve a <laughs> half a term. Believe it or not, the, they can serve another two years but they can't serve another full term. And they left that open just in case there was a political shit show where um, there was no <clears throat> viable alternative. There could be some kind of political compromise for two years until things settle down. Um, Really quickly, anyone who visits the state of California, we have this really weird law where if you are here than more than two weeks, you're considered a resident. That's why they tell some people to apply for a driver's license. It's dumb. Don't do it. We have crazy laws here. You do not want to be subject to our laws if you're not from here. You will or not Texas. like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or Georgia. <laughs> I say do not switch your license over. Arizona has passed a law about that and Nevada where you do not get punished because... Yeah, also in the state of California, our tickets start at 1400 No one can, not even rich people can afford that. Come on. Yeah, I grew up the same way, Godless. My mom wasn't confrontational, but my dad was. I'm trying to catch up with the chat. 
We're going to need room requirements for the police up bar. <laughs> you know what? My beef with the cops is it's not even... If their resources were reallocated, we would all get along. But we have people who work 17-hour days who get around people like me who will tell them to F off to their face. So it creates... It just creates a, a situation of calamity waiting to happen. Obama was in a terrible position. <laughs> yeah, hanging out with Epstein. <laughs> oh, Are Epstein. He he was absolutely infamous. I remember it was like 2005 and Denise Glasser was organizing a fundraiser and she and she said, I don't want Epstein or Trump anywhere near that place because those people can't keep their hands off of anyone. Yikes. Those two. It's like, they all I'm, the, all I'm, a, I, I'm an officer of the Florida Democratic Party and these two billionaires cannot come anywhere near my fundraiser. <coughs> During the lockdowns in 2020, watching the Australian news was one of the scariest things on earth. What Mark is talking about right here happened in real time in our lifetimes. They gave the power to the police and the police clamped down on people in the most miserable, weird ways. You should go back and look at some of the news stories. Like people were commenting on Facebook and getting arrested in Australia. <laughs> Well, they just passed a law like that in Ireland, too, and Scotland's not that far behind, and our Restrict Act is kind of the same thing. If I can't, I work for my mom. If I can't talk trash about my mother, then I'm moving somewhere else. <laughs> if I can't go on Facebook and be like, I hate my job. Why was I born into this family? <laughs> I hope reincarnation's not real. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? What a world. Maybe you'll come back can... as a rich person's cat. I could do that. Sit around, eat, get petted all day. Hey, that sounds like the perfect like, sign. Me up. Oh. <laughs> well, you take that out of here. Thank you. It's we not one of those pigeon. Persian cats with a smushed face. I don't want to have congenital problems. Making it... I would like to be an expensive cat with no health issues. <laughs> so really quickly, can we have a sidebar? Um, hold on, let me make myself big. Hey, um... I know no one's watching that breeds, but can we stop overbreeding um, animals in general? Which one? Which one's the the dog that has the the pug? Oh yeah, pugs have got oh, yeah. smushy faces, and French bulldogs always have to be delivered by cesarean. Like no, and dachshunds have spine issues. It bothers me. That bothers me. We need to stop that. The, I. They uh, of course because I live in California, it's illegal to breed dogs here. <laughs> We've clamped down on it, but dog breeding is gross. And and I'm saying that because I'm feeding every stray cat, every abandoned cat, with an earshot, and so I'm mad about it now. <laughs> spay or new? I'm literally turned into Bob Barker. Um, please spay or new to your pets. I'm gonna throw that in on my disclaimer from now on. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that seems very not Australian. What the heck? All the animals and the, all the overbreeding. Yeah, it is unhealthy. Okay, I will stop breeding mosquitoes. Yeah, please <laughs> dump keep the water out. <laughs> right. Just no standing water. But then, what are the bats going to eat? See, there's so many issues. Then the possums. We weirdly, we weirdly have a lot of bats around here. But there's caves and mountains near my house. But we have tons of bats. I love those little suckers. <laughs> People don't want an animal. They want a plaything. I agree. And then, like, like there is a, a... I don't know if it's abandoned, but there's a tomcat with no collar now in my backyard. And it's huge. And I can tell because it's skinny and it has giant paws. So it's going to be a big boy. Then this one is a boy. Phoenix taught me how to tell. <laughs> Is he packing? Yes or no? <laughs> That's how we know Odin um, is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's crazy around here. It's kind of cool. Like, I'm a Twilight um, person and because I work at 4.30 in the morning. Like, I love it right before the sun comes up. And um, 
twilight well the clouds are out but especially like this time of night when the sun's going down the bats are they're everywhere because you'll look at like what are those things and they're bats They have improved the laws on, on show dogs. Some years ago, the champion German Shepherds were so inbred that they couldn't even stand up properly. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's torture. They're like, why, why am I here? Literally, like, why was I born? I'm surprised you need Phoenix to point that out to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, th you just look down. <laughs> look down. <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> I'm not looking. I'm not a pet person <laughs> i don't care well, you whatever. Are now. whatever i'm from california man we have laws against that <laughs> yeah you know, i don't want to misgender my cat <laughs> oh, jesus how is it i know that what was that new law that they passed up in canada that they can, you can get fined twenty five thousand dollars if you accidentally misgender somebody but the fines for having child prawn images, like over 10 doesn't even get you to like 20,000. I think we have the same laws here. California. You don't get fined 25. Oh. That's Granted, in Canada is monopoly money, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know who needs a toonie and a loony. I really think we have the exact same law. You know, workplace in there. Yeah, you can get fired and jailed if you're habitual about it. And I know that because they teach it. Like, I have to watch the employer um, video every year because I'm part of the management team. I know I act like a child. I know it's shocking, but I'm part of the, the management team. And so I have to watch the elder abuse video and distribute it to all the guys in the shop. I have to watch um, the sexual harassment video, all the, you know, all the all the new laws every year. But now everything's online, so we just have to look it up. Speaking of animals... In most cases, you just too. figure out what someone's going for and then just use the pronoun. Right? And if you, it, that's when you talk about somebody it. behind their back. How do they even know? Unless you're, like, blasting it online. I mean, and... To be fair, though, I'm going to tell you, um, regardless of who or, or what you are or what you say or anything, if you act like an idiot um, here in California, you'll get fired because there are literally 50 people waiting to replace you. So employers are like waiting to fire people, <laughs> especially because pot's legal and, and it's up to the employer's discretion. But to quote my boss, if I started testing people for pot, I wouldn't have employees. So... <laughs> so you can have cute balls unlike bulls and some other mammals man i am behind on the chat i've never heard of these rules i have no idea it's seriously effed up and are there any um crazy laws where you live commander like because people get shocked um about where i live but i live in like you know we're literally well, on not the <laughs> not that i know of but i live in the state of new york so i'm pretty sure there's some law that was passed well-meaning and the reason for its existence is in question that's usually the way crazy laws happen or legislatures overreact to a problem let me see if i can legally talk about this i'm gonna mute myself real quick because i want to answer gilroy's uh question but i have to ask a question okay so <laughs> yeah i am just working on this romanian point lace cord for my irish crochet schmata that I'm just, it's going to take me hundreds of hours because I've got all these little motifs to work up and then the late, the netting. But I thought that the border would be cute so that I know it's like my guideline for the, the garment, for the top and the skirt or the dress if they're attached. <laughs> I still do have crazy laws. It just varies on which side they're on. True, Dad. So I just called my uh, my boss my bossinator. Um, I 
somebody this person i can't say uh there's a lot of there's a lot of nepotism at my job it's not just me so people hire uh, all there's all there's nepotism in every direction long story short i um there was a young man that i hired and i had not dealt with the younger generation before ever so he was my first run with somebody who was under 40 because most people i work with are over 50 because they all used to work for my dad and my dad was over 70 and 80 and blah, 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 you know? So I'm, I'm the, the young boss. Long story short, I hired this young man and he would always disappear. And I found him um, in that, in the gym. I've told this story before cause I'm, I'm telling it. And I remember I've told this story before, but I, I, but like with my job, there's like FICA and all weird laws where I don't know if I can tell certain, like I can't say the race of the employees or the gender or anything like that. You know, but long story short, I caught this man hiding in an electrical room and the gym and the gym that I film in that was built in the 1950s. So all the electricity is in one room with big warning signs. That's it was, it's surrounded by a cage. You could die in that room and he would hang out in there. And I caught him and I, I canned him on spot on the spot. And he was a big dude. He was a big boy. And he did not like the fact that I canned him. <laughs> but I don't fire. That's the only person I've ever fired. I don't fire people. Like, I'm actually a really laid back person. What and I, unfortunately, I'm serious. That was what made the rule change to include health. The news picked it up and the public opinion put pressure on them after that happened. What is your company, if you don't mind me saying? I work with uh, mentally disabled adults. I work on a giant 65-acre uh, facility. We take care of those who can't take care of themselves. I'm a, um, but I get to, my, my cowboy hat isn't just for show. That's why I love when I see like the super wannabe righty guys with their trucks and their, and I look at them, I'm like, you don't even have dirt on your truck. I actually work on a ranch, you wannabes. And I'm super gay about it. I literally have fabric in the back of my truck and a, I still have the same singer sewing table. I was going to ask you. You were supposed to take that out two weeks ago. I could go pull it out right now. I need, I should. But the problem is, here's the problem. Like this vest is sitting here. I've been sitting here for 52 minutes yakking. I'm so glad I lined the vest before I started the stream. <laughs> because the second I pull that sewing table out of my truck, I'm going to have to do something about it. I should go put my coveralls on and go rip that thing out of the truck. Yeah, just get it done with. We can hold down the fort for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no pavement princess. <laughs> hey, Abe. No, I'm not a fan. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Awesome, awesome. I yeah, you're being yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's raining in, in getting ready to sprinkle in California's better older cousin. <laughs> That's scary, though. Another. What if he died? Two hours until this render is done. He's hey. talking out loud. No worries. We will <laughs> do it. I was hoping it's to not get... even a machine, it's just the table that's been sitting in the truck forever. <laughs> I was hoping to get Junior to help me, but I think. He... Oh, maybe that's my family. Because I hear the water pipes and I'm like, is he taking a shower early? Maybe he got a new girlfriend or something. No, he's getting ready. He's probably got his proselytization stream going on. He's got to look nice for his his new followers. It's driving me crazy. Hope he doesn't start a call. Oh, he already did. No, I I am too involved as a parent to allow any of that to go on. Thank you, thank thank you, butterfly. I have a collection of dinner jackets and one mariachi jacket that has shoulder pads. And when I'm having a bad day, I put that thing on and wear it around the house. I love that thing. It literally has um, shoulder pads, it, and it's it's. Uh, I got it at a thrift store, and the lady was even like. This is from some old mariachi band. <laughs> oh, but I found my leather pants that I've been threatening to put on, and they're so tight I can't close the front because I'm old. I, I have you a front about that, Right, you gotta take care of that fupa. <laughs> uh, I found my leather pants, and the fupa is real. 
<laughs> Let me close this. Um, these are old Kawasaki, um, old Kawasaki writing pants. <laughs> these things are old. Yeah, those and, are not your on. color. <laughs> Well, they're close enough. <laughs> <laughs> in a pinch, in a picture, I yeah, they're they're so tight they show the actual curve of my arse. They're so tight. <laughs> oh, I tried tight. them on earlier. I, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna wear them um, for the stream, and um, I was like. I put them on. I was like, oh, no, I don't have that much confidence. Because <laughs> life is confidence. It's just it's how much you believe that you are going to do something like, OK, I'm going to do this and you do it, you know. But <laughs> those irons, they are heavy. That's why I'm sitting here BSing, hoping that my son isn't in the shower. because I'm going to go grab him in a second to see if he'll help me grab it. <laughs> <laughs> those iron tables, they are so heavy. Cult of controversy. Oh, speaking of dinner, I I next grilled the drumsticks and yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Um, <laughs> these are for I believe these are from the 1970s. I got these in a bin. Oh, Kilroy, now I'm hungry. Barbecue chicken oh. sounds amazing. Um, I believe these are from the 70s. I hey skits crasher, hop in. I um I got these at a at the SWAT meet so long ago that um, I was hanging out with my ex-wife. So these are probably like 12 or 13 years old. <laughs> but I bought this from a guy that used to have old like Ukrainian um, uniforms and all kind, not you, Yugoslavian uniforms and all kinds of stuff. I got these pants and I'll grab it in a second because the chat's going off. <laughs> and Bell and I am pro um pooch because I have one. So rock your pooch. <laughs> In the city, they sell buckets of mud for people to put on their trucks. So they look like this. <laughs> we make fun of those people around here, Mark. If you don't matter of fact, there's mud on my truck right now, and it hasn't rained in a while. I need to wash my truck. It's embarrassing. <laughs> you gotta do it before the summer water restrictions go into effect <laughs> those are like the people around here that spend thousands of dollars to baja their truck out and never go to the to the um to the desert and we literally live where you can just drive out into the desert that is pathetic oh that's funny yay hello hello i would bet the kawasaki pants could be worth some coin and that's it. thank you i Alibaba, you have an eye like me. Like, I um, I will. Like, these are up for sale. 10000 bucks to anyone who's into um, classic motocross. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but these are definitely... You just... You have to be, like... Um, like, Tom Petty skinny. Like, newscaster skinny. Yeah. Because I'm skinny and I put those on, I was like, oh, 40, the, my 40s have hit me like a brick. <laughs> Hi, Skits. We need to close the, the, the light truck loop. <laughs> I've seen city people come out here and lock their hubs to drive up the dirt road. <laughs> I don't even lock my hubs in the snow. See, but my truck's so heavy. Like, when I pull up to the mountain, like, the, the rangers, they just wave me on. Like, you don't even need chains, bro. Just keep going. Oh, that's funny. In the UK, Kawasaki and Honda, anything retro. See, I need to hear that. I'm going to um, go put them up for sale because they don't fit me anymore. I want somebody else to enjoy them. Oh, I also I got that and... <laughs> this I will never sail, even though um, it it it's really revealing. But this is my Captain Jerk uniform. I used to say Captain Kirk, but in my drinking days, I would wear this, and this was my Captain Jerk. Oh, funny! I'll be right back. <laughs> this is um, straight nineteen seventies um, costume. 
And I got it from that same guy. Was it I like mean, a prop from that show or was it just something that was sold in the store? Um, it was sold in the store. Good question, because I did a ton of research and it's the same. Um, it's Bumblebee um, costumes and they still make costumes to this very day. But because it's 100 percent polyester, it's from the 1970s. I miss that guy because I found all of that in a giant. He had this these just giant bins he would bring to the swap meet of just old uniforms. I, I'm five nine. I would be in these bins, legs up, <laughs> literally legs up, digging through the bins. I miss those days. Oh, good old Sunday mornings, man. That's how I spend my Sunday mornings. Is at the swap meet in Broward County. There's a place called the Swap Shop. I think it's officially the third largest um, tourist attraction or the fourth in the state, or at least when I live there. And my iPhone is getting all twitchy, so you can see I'm getting all twitchy. <laughs> no, you're fine. Kilroy, um, because of, I live in a weird city country setting, um, I don't drive my truck into the city. I take my car because it's, it is menacing. My truck's 25 feet long and, and it's, I think it's eight or nine feet wide. It's huge. My truck is huge. So <laughs> I do not take that thing into the city. I actually drove it to the dispensary today because it's on literally on the other side of the train tracks. I love driving like my truck um, I, it, because it's considered a classic truck, I love that thing. It's just, it's a giant cruiser. And yes, people with pickup trucks are menaces. Around here, quite honestly, when I see someone with the, with that, um, with the American flag with the blue line through it, I know they're going to drive like an a-hole. The blue lives matter. I know they're going to drive like a crazy person. <laughs> I only lock my husband. Oh, if I was a cop, I would actually want to pull those people over <laughs> because they would have an attitude of entitlement that they're allowed to get away with it. And then I would tase them. <laughs> Around here, most of them are cops. That's the problem. I There was actually a guy, um, I ripped him off of, of his, can you say crotch rocket? I guess I did. I like there's a difference between like um like because I grew up around people that I grew up around Harley people that own Harley so I say crotch rocket to be insulting but this guy came he was doing circles on the front of the property in the ranch like in the grass not even in the dirt and I I came up and I was like hey man you gotta get out of here and he um he's like I'm a cop and I ripped him off of his bike <laughs> I don't care get off my property <laughs> I swear your brain shrinks the fast the the tougher you the tougher someone thinks they are the, the more they're with brain authority. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, most cops around here are scared to lose their jobs, so they're actually weirdly respectful. Because again, we have laws here. <laughs> <laughs> laws for can... those who enforce the laws. What witchcraft is this? <laughs> I have an extended cab Toyota for a while with my friend wrecked it. I was ready. I was ready for a tiny car. There's pros and cons. I had a Mazda three and there's the one thing about having a tiny car is that you can go anywhere. That's the one thing I liked about it. And it was perfect for like a family of three. I'd also like to know what happened to pickup trucks. They used to be simple transportation. So now they're luxury cars. Yes, they are. Um, I always jokingly say that I couldn't afford to buy my truck, like the like the 2023 version of my truck. I could not afford the 70 grand that they want for it. When um, there's a, um, I'm gonna look it up before I start telling fairy tales. But Ford Raptors, I think they go for a hundred thousand um, dollars. And I see them on the road around here, and I'm like. Bro, you spent eighty thousand dollars on a car, or like, cause you know they're not spending a hundred thousand on it, you know. But it trips me out that people spend. Okay, used. 
a 2023 used is $190,000? Why are these things worth so much money? I, I will, I will never understand people why. people use them to compensate for their lack of um, testicles. <laughs> but they're not that big. And brains. The Raptor is not that big of a car, though. Like, if I'm going to spend that much money, I want, like, a bus. And then a bus driver. <laughs> I liked my 1994 Chevy 10 regular regular cab extended bed replacement. It would be 82K last I checked. Wow. I saw a video talking about how station wagons are so, so much more practical for things people say they want SUVs for. So funny you would say that. Um, I was watching Alf because Liz got me hooked on watching Alf again. And they they did this thing where they went out to the desert and they were in a um, station wagon. And my first thought was, I miss station wagons. They were awesome vehicles. Raptor is already. <laughs> Raptors are trash. I know, but it trips me out how much money people spend for those trucks. Old motorbikes from 1970s and 80s are fetching big money here. I've had a 1983 y YZ490 that I paid 3K for that I could easily get 10K for now. Um, all the Hollister Harleys go for unreal prices in Australia. Like all the old school original Harleys, they go for unreal prices. At least I can honestly say that I used to haul dirt and rocks in my truck. <laughs> That's what I, my truck is a farm truck. So I point and laugh at people. Why don't I good luck at finding a, a wagon nowadays, though? The closest thing is a hatchback. Is you know it's so funny. I have a Ford Flex. You can make fun of me. It's okay. Yeah, I consider it, that. Isn't a Subaru basically a station wagon? Some of the like the Outback. They've um they've morphed weirdly into SUVs because my my wife owns the my ex wife owns the one that's um I don't even know how it's the original Subaru where it's like it sits high but it's it's like a station wagon. Mm -hmm. And then her husband has one that's a Subaru, but it's like an SUV, but it still has that weird shape, but it's higher. But oh it's the an SUV. Forester. Yeah. It's so weird, you know. It's because of the light truck loophole. I use my S10 for bait, fishing, dirt, and construction material. I'm going to go check on the kid real quick because I'm going to go get that thing out of the truck. All right. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, Killer Ray. They only make them in Europe, generally speaking. It's because, oh, we did that. We did that. Higher, all the better to kill pedestrians. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's this is the night we're having. All right, folks. <laughs> hopefully, everybody's Monday was not crazy, <gasps> but hopefully, in two weeks, my tech issues should be slightly improved because I splurged and ordered a new computer today. I don't want anything beyond a compact SUV fare. I love my Subaru and. Yeah, she's getting up there, but we have barely over 100,000 miles. So I'm like, if I take care of her, we can get another 100,000 on her. <laughs> I got to clean up my mess in here before I bring another mess in here. I have feelings about those SUV menaces. Probably watching too many Not Just Bikes videos. I, I ordered from Meta PCs a new laptop. So... <clears throat> they're a new company to me, but the quartering keeps shilling their or recommending them to build his computers. It's a veteran owned made in America computer company. So I'm like over the big, I bought my last Lenovo. <laughs> yeah. I love my Subaru. She's driven across the country. I just love it. I know now I have to write down all the programs that I have installed so I know what I need to reinstall on the new computer. 
and hopefully get my computer, my camera working because I, it doesn't, oh, does it, I don't think it, well, it'll be a new adventure. I don't know. Oh, I've shut off my work keys. Yes, you're like battery. Because I'm crazy. <laughs> I have to carry these everywhere I go. And I wear these. And these are my keys. <laughs> you can if you don't hear me coming a mile away, you're hard of hearing. <laughs> the middle keychain looks like my keychain. I have keys for stuff that probably I don't even own anymore. Every time anything's missing, they call me. I live in a TARDIS for anyone who's interested. I live in an actual TARDIS. All right, I'll be right back. We're in France now. It is true. You, They do do custom builds on their towers and their laptop. So I think if I need to upgrade stuff, then I might be able to just replace the parts, which will be new to me. Because I've only taken apart my towers and I'm not that mechanically, technically talented. But I did upgrade the hard drive to two terabytes because... <laughs> Why not? Sounds and you get the kind of computer you want, not the kind of computer the company thinks you want. Exactly. Yes. Back problems making keychain. You got enough jingle to do belly dancing. Oh yes, he does. Can't you just see that shimmy now? I love my old 75 series Land Cruisers. It's got almost did I read that? Is that actually say 700,000 miles or click? So that's kilometers. Seven uh, clock on the clock and the engine is still going strong. Doesn't even have any blow by yet. Awesome. Couldn't hear you coming. Those keys sound like they're coming from everywhere and sounds like an accident <laughs> happening between trains. <laughs> oh gosh. Let's see here. Speaking of repair. Colorado just passed the first right to repair law in the country. Hopefully more states will follow suit. Interesting. He was doing some moves in the latest video. Maybe he can branch out. <laughs> we're laughing at you. No, we're not. Well, I'm out of shape. I, am. I need to do more moves. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I know between the keychain and the belly dancing, if we give him another six weeks, he'll be able to fit into his pants again. <laughs> My S10 had 748,000 kilometers on it before I got rid of it. Perfect. That is crazy. So, oh, oh, oh. so explain, what is this right to repair? What is that, like, I repair anything? Repair your car? Like, well, they design products oh. so that you can't repair it. Or... Uh, okay. All right, that makes sense. Yes, because I would like to not have to, like, throw out stuff every couple of years if it's, like, completely dead and I can't fix it. <laughs> oh, Killera, you're too funny. Godless has to shake it like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> Try taking apart a high-end laptop. There is always just this one screw that you don't know where it is. You can't find it, and you will crack the motherboard, and you need to find someone who is doing a YouTube tutorial on how to take it apart. Or, you know. Let me see something. Let me yep. see how useful this camera is. Which one is it? Is it that one? Yes. <laughs> There's a camera. Okay, Let's or it wrecks the warranty if you take it to not them. Yeah, I. that's the problem I have. 
the one thing I have about my kitchen powered by Ninja and my Dyson and my Baby Lock. Wow, do I, for somebody who hates proprietary products, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe I finally got this thing out of my truck. Thanks, guys. It's only been in the truck for two months or a month and a half. Or... <laughs> I'll just peer pressure you into it. All the woods got to go, though. Alibaba, you're the, our resident professional. This um, sat outside. So is any of the wood salvageable? Because I'm literally going to get a hammer in a minute and just take all the wood off. Just beat that shit. <laughs> Do you I, want um, to I, recreate it later? Take pictures. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a more modern... That's a good, that, that is a good point, um, Commander. I'm going to make a more modern um, top for it. And I have all kinds of cool stuff at my job that I could um, do. Look up Lewis Rossman on YouTube or, or Rumble. He's heavily involved in the rights to repair fight. Sweet. Just got it Googled. No, but um, Butterfly, I love finding treasures whenever I buy uh, sewing machines or like I love it or I'll find a book that's not for that sewing machine. I have I have books for sewing machines that I don't even own. Just needs a new veneer. The, but the um, let me see if I could. Can you see the water damage right here? This is flaky. Oh, it's all split. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's ir it's irreplaceable. And this wood is what a hundred something years old, you know, because it's an it's an authentic uh, singer table. And a lot of this stuff is aging out over a hundred, even if it's like the mass produced stuff, it still is over a hundred something years old, especially the tables. The Hertz engines routinely do over a million kilometers, and many do 1.5 million before a rebuild. And some glue. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to take a lot of tacky tacky. <laughs> um, like also the right to repair thing. I The shows were talking about this. There was a, a clinic that sent a ultrasound machine to be repaired. And basically they said, sorry, we don't service this anymore. It was... It was kind of still usable, but when they tried turning it on, it didn't work. And then when they opened it up, they basically just smashed the thing on the inside and put it back together. Ooh. So you, they had to buy a whole new machine rather than just try to use that one as long as they could. That's crazy. Am I wrong, or is this entire thing built around the wrought iron on this table? Because yes. I'm a salvager. Okay, good. I'm a salvage good kind of guy. Like, if the the metal's good, I'll just rip it down and rebuild it completely. Oh, because and even though you're going to, like, if you're, even though I know you're going to use that for the sewing machine, um, pre-World War II, uh, iron and steel sells for a premium because it doesn't have any trace amounts of radioactive shit in it. So they use it for like um, equipment when they make equipment for um, sensitive stuff. I'm, I'm too tired, but like microprocessors. And stuff. Right. But the steel sells know. for more, a lot more. That's good to know. Uh, I have a lot of actually uh, pre World War II metal in this room. <laughs> I don't have just sewing machines in here. I I I seriously should open up a museum with the amount of crud. Looks like your wood is still good. Need some glue. <laughs> I don't know. This is. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take the comments down in a minute and show you the front of this thing. But it is trashed. Remove the first drawer. Oh, it's just four screws? See, I was wondering about that, too, because then I could keep the wood and deal with it another day. If you don't heave it around. <laughs> this has been um, flopping around the back of my giant truck that is so big that I forgot this thing was back there. <laughs> so it's just been abused a left, right, till Tuesday. <laughs> well, it, like, I... Um, I, I have the the bed of my truck is coated so it has ridges 
So it's pretty like it's heavy, so it's stuck in the ridges and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's so heavy it wasn't going anywhere anyway. I'm gonna grab my tool bag that I have. Uh um I call it my um sewing machine tool bag. It's just a bunch of screwdrivers and wrenches, but <laughs> I use it for, for a sewing machine. Oh. Okay, does he need help? Do I need to go get the door? I get I'll I have to go get the door. <laughs> oh, you made it. Any tomato? Please? I am running over my mic line. Do you know what's funny? Um that tool bag is extremely heavy, so I know it it, it can still hold up some weight. Take out the four screws. I want to see how thick it apart. I'm giddy. <laughs> <laughs> how thick are those screws? <laughs> All right. Well, I got to take my cowboy boots off because I cannot maneuver. God is sewing secret cowboy boots were made for walking, but they were not made for crawling around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm still here just having to get up for a minute to stretch your legs to get something to drink fair. That is a okay. I am trying. I'm taking a break from my cord, trying to decide what motifs to make, and complaining yes, that I'm I don't have a matte tomato pants. Sorry. <laughs> no. Yes, I'm wearing a Matt Smith T-shirt. I'm a Doctor Who fanboy. Get over it. 2015 is over, but I'm not over it. <laughs> I'm here, right here. Probably like 20, like before 2015. Okay. So when you say four screws, chat, um, are they underneath? And I'm. this is me not looking. Are they on the side? All right. Let's do some exploring. Right. Just, just, just tip her over carefully. Okay. Drawers oh, out. So there's so much glass in this room. I throw nothing in this room. I throw nothing in this room. Do you have a baggie to put the screws in so you don't misplace them or a magnet? No, but you're going to make fun of me in each of these drawers. I label what table they came from, but I have the screws of every table in this room that I've taken the top off. Because I, I, I display the machine and not the, you know, I don't need the, right, the other part of the table. Let's see. The screws are on the inside top of the top of the irons. I would awesome. go to the theater to see the premieres and season finales and such. Sweet. Let's see. All right. I should put my gloves on like a professional. Right. <laughs> do you do you think soak the top with all the restore the wood? Do you know if I can get this in um if I can get this out in one piece, I can take this up to my job and do whatever I want with it. I could soak it, recreate it. I'm having oh, a water bunch, I'm having got a... all sorts of lubricants in there <laughs> if he needs it. I I do. <laughs> This is the manliest sewing room ever. <laughs> <laughs> a gentle impact drive. Oh, we I, have... I'm overkill. I have a clutch driver. It destroys everything. I'm going to do it by hand. The, I've learned. I use my clutch driver. It is too powerful. It is too, too powerful. <laughs> I've learned over the years of destroying things. And I know Kilroy's going to make fun of me again, but I learned with the Gojo and the sewing machine. <laughs> I learned a lesson that day. Don't F around. Right. <laughs> or somebody will correct you. Oh, what are they meant a manual one? I, he's got every, well, we, he's got everything he could possibly want or need in that room. This room is a TARDIS. Okay. The drawer came off perfectly. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> In... Yeah, they might be rusted into place. 
right now it just looks like it's falling apart. And the play by let's see here. Can we roadside commentate the dismantling of the sewing machine? And he is underneath the sewing machine, moving the pedal. It looks like things are a little unsteady under there on that left hand side. Do we have a and screw? Can we say, and can we also say that you two finally got Gala sewing on his knees? So everybody who's been waiting all these years for it, I'm I'm here. Take your pictures. <laughs> he might be rusted like a glove. Ah, the screws are probably so rusty they'll crumble out. <laughs> and we have metal moving. One side, two side. Those drawers look very unsteady on, on that table mount there. Okay, Let's I see. think I think I found the screws that we're talking about. All right. Looks like we have one. I see unscrewing happening. We have maybe one screw out. Let's see here. We've only got three left to go. Three oh, left. why am I going towards? I'm going towards the wrong camera. Oh my gosh. All right, we have a screw. <laughs> Professional two YouTuber two here. Come off after the four top ones. All right, we're going for screw number two. It's coming out. Oh, it looks like it's twisting pretty easy over there. We have two free screws. All right, we're 50% done, 50% to go on the unscrewing of the screws on the table. The drawers are thin wood. They will wiggle if you heave on them. Yes, we've had lots of wiggling of drawers right now. Yep, that's the right spot for the top of the base screws. All right. Where's the other two? <laughs> All right, and we just lost two more screws. Oh, we're, we look at, he's on his knees looking for the last two screws. And we will shortly find out where these clips are. Oh, <laughs> the table's falling apart in front of our eyes. Who's going to fall over first, the table or godless? Let's see here. Is this officially um, man versus machine? I'll take it. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> You're looking at the wrong camera again. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Professional YouTuber right here. Bow ties are cool. <laughs> All right. We have the table. It's going down. You might need might need a long driver. Oh, we'll see how long a driver we're going to need here. There's some human handling of the machine going on. Oh. He's looking curiously. Found it. Do we I have found third it. Screws? Oh, we found two more screws. These two back ones are between the irons and the wood bent underside. All right. I think I see screw number three coming out as we're speaking. Looks like it's pretty good. Hey, Liz. You're back, but some tool is blasting a bad remix of Porsche. Pour some sugar on me in the name of love. <laughs> Sorry, Liz. <laughs> he has the right spot for it. All right. Allie confirms we're in the right spot for finding screws number three and four. I, oh, there's a hand deep in the well and some jiggling going on. We're getting close. There is unscrewing happening. I think we might be in the home stretches here. There's some more jiggling. Maybe screw three. I had to get a bigger screwdriver. <laughs> yes, there was words. Ellie said that you were going to need a bigger screwdriver. My poor shag carpet. Oh, we're going to need some vacuuming after that. Let's see here. <laughs> remix of four. I just can't imagine. It was fine without the remixing jerk. <laughs> right. Leave some things alone. I have one of those singer tables around here somewhere. Machine is still in it. I wish it wasn't so bulky. Otherwise, I'd use it. Yeah, those tables, they really literally are a piece of furniture. <laughs> oh, Commander, I hate it when screws get stripped. 
Yup, we've gotten it down to the longer drive. Wiggle it just a little bit. Wanna see wiggle you wiggle it? it. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Watch for splinters into the rug. I think I'll put his boots on right afterwards, and then when we're done, we will get the vacuum scalpel <laughs> and pickups, please. Oh, there's more wood wiggling deep in the bowels of the sewing machine. We are pulling out random pieces of things. Wood is being broken and thrown have violently onto the floor now. <laughs> it looks like he needs a lunchable, not drugs. Okay. Stay safe with your feeding of the special. Oh, but there's more screwing. We, I think we've got screw four of four. The featherweight shop sells thread out stats. There goes the basket. I know. Who knew that commentating sewing machine destruction could be so much fun? <laughs> Was probably pulling out the crappy old belt. Yes. <laughs> All right. What is going on? Oh, I think the drawers are getting ready to go. They have hooks, but. No, there's these two clippy pieces. Yeah, but they're really stuck in place. All right, get the lube. I have, I have impatience. <laughs> okay, we've moved up to power head. tools. No, Please. I don't have the proper head. And I've learned to not be so tool time. Square peg fits around a round hole with a 40 pound sledgehammer. Yes. <laughs> so true. So true. We'll just forget about the splinters. Oh, I hear wood cracking. We have more destruction going on in the house of sewing. Oh, the treadle is being birthed from the table right now. Are we going to have more wood throwing? I see more wood throwing in the future. Oh, treadle down, treadle down. <laughs> I can fix that. <laughs> Uh, just the four top screws in the drawers to go. I, th I think the drawers might be toast. <laughs> Burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in all opinions, is that salvageable? Is there any way I could um, solve this? Is there any way you can talk to the correct camera? Is there? Oh, I have to talk to the microphone too. That's the problem. The microphone's pointing towards this one. Professional YouTuber. Right. The drawer frame is for the seven drawer. GS's famous last words. I can fix that. <laughs> Oof, this Ellie, is what I was... Maybe the hey, locks. This is what I need. <laughs> now I can make my own table and put my 1906 on it. Yep. And it still works. I just broke the wood. <laughs> I can fix that. I can fix that. <laughs> I can fix that. It was I, I, We've heard that a couple times already. <laughs> <laughs> that frame is metal. It should be cast iron. Oh, no, it is. It was held up by a wood piece. The actual treadle piece was being um, distributed by a wood piece. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Oh, what am I going to do without you being in the back of my truck? <laughs> you have room for not more sewing machines. <laughs> it just won't be a potential disaster every time I make a right turn. 
Ja. <laughs> so I'm taking uh, ideas for what I should do for the tabletop of this. Bakelite. <laughs> I have, uh, this is my almost smashed Vaughn um, Vaughn Hammer. They sold this to me at my job. They sold us a bunch of stuff, and I was like, you guys haven't given me any t-shirts or free stuff. So they gave me a hammer and a bunch of free shirts. <laughs> oh, that's what I forgot. Right, I got ordered a new computer. I got a free t-shirt to shill to promote the company. Oh. So there's, awesome. there might, I might get a affiliate link if they approve me if I like the computer. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> If the top is too jacked up, you repair the drawer frames. I'm thinking about replacing the entire thing and just keeping the singer because I've seen some awesome rebuilds. Because I'm obsessed with um, cruising the internet at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> for I odd know, things. I, I saw somebody had a casket Kate lid for their hand, their old singer. I was like, oh, that's the one thing Brunhild doesn't have is a. Uh, she doesn't have a lid, which is why I keep her covered up in her blankie. <laughs> <laughs> I know I need to start covering my brother PE 535 I've been lazily just having it right here I'm sitting here smoking over that thing like clanking coffee up against it it's crazy yeah I, I try to be nice to her she's lived longer than I have <laughs> I have been waiting to do that for so long I have literally just been driving around with that thing in my truck like a dented a Right, just a little peer pressure to get things moving along sometimes. These are all coffin tops. <gasps> you, Ellie, you, you have everything. Can I just like, no, it's too cold there. I don't want to live at your house. <laughs> I moved. <laughs> we have the wood. <laughs> I actually tried to live up there and I, I, well, I tried to live in Alaska and I knew I wouldn't make it through the winter. I knew. <laughs> No, I did 25 Alaska. years in New York State. I think Wasilla, according to DEA, was the meth capital of America. And Anchorage, supposedly, is one of the most gangster places in America. I, um, Someone I know, half of their family moved there, and I was so shocked. Because I, I was watching a documentary, and I showed someone, and they were like, bro, that's my cousin, and they showed me pictures. <laughs> It's Marquette. Why am I talking like acting like I don't know? Like you guys don't know who this person is. He was like, "Bro, that's my cousin," and like they actually live in Anchorage. And I was this close to um, moving there, but I, I spent some time there. And like when I lived in Arizona, I lived um, in Mesa before Chandler, Arizona was built up. It was depressing. I lived out in the middle of the desert, and um. It, like a lot of people harmed themselves there when I lived in Arizona and Alaska reminded me of that. Just the never ending endlessness. And Arizona was like that. Like no matter how far you looked out, it was just endlessness, you know? So At I, I can see that. Arizona, you have a day and a night and not six weeks of <laughs> endless darkness or endless twilight. I don't know if I could hang with that too. Like I need, um, I need daylight and, and I need the sun to go down. <laughs> right. I think that's the reason why there's so much depression. You have insomnia all summer long. And then you have um, no light or very little light all winter. I would go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I would go crazy. My claw hammer is one of those I dug out of the garden when I was four or five years. I must have been one of those builders that broke up when building the house. It's good quality. I have um, wonder bars that, that are like that. I have one that I wrote my name on when I was a little kid, and I found it. Made me laugh. I'm going to have to look at those one and I. I have some some Wera screwdrivers that are that I really like. Go to your local swap meet. I know this is really sad to say. Most of the tools are stolen, <laughs> but they're quality tools. I get can live in Alaska. In, 
get yourself ancient craftsman screwdrivers. Not the new ones, but the old ones will last forever. Try getting... If you buy cheap screwdrivers, they're going to wear out pretty damn quick. Literally, literally snap on you. I'll give you an example. Let me see. I have a good example. Where is it? Oh, there's a screwdriver. Oh, I don't... I bought a shed. Oh! And this came with the shed. This will break. It looks like a quality tool, but it's I can tell just by looking at it that it's it's like a questionable if it's even metal. <laughs> Actually, I can find out real quick because I have a metal detector. Let's find out. And the instructions were in what I considered uh, Chinese. So... It's not metal. Uh, some of it is. The tip is not metal. Oh, that's funny. So it's half metal. <laughs> I was kind of joking. Um, Gilroy, Alaska is strangely depressing. It, but life is environment. I'm sure if you moved out there to the compound with a bunch of hippie friends and a bunch of mushrooms, you'd have the time of your life. It is hard to find old craftsmen. It is made in China. I bought a shed. It was the most complicated thing. I was like, "Am I too stupid to put this shed together? Am I too dumb?" And it took me. It took me a couple weeks, but I got it together. <laughs> Don't buy KC screwdrivers. They make good spanners, but their screwdrivers are cheese. I agree. Some good ones can do that. Is it Hoto? Hoto tool set. I'm looking at it because I need a small hammer and a tape measure. You just have to be careful because um, a lot of stuff is made with really cheap metal. And, and well, I build like frames for houses and stuff. So I need something that I could like run over. Oh, okay. What it is is they don't heat treat it or. They heat treat it to they make it too hard. It's either they don't heat treat it or they make it too hard. I'm trying to think because I have um tools that are like this. This thing, this is my my paint can opener, okay? I know that this is older than me. I know that this thing is old, but it still works. It, I've dropped this thing. I've left it in a field. I found it in a field. It could have been there for like six months. <laughs> but it's been around my entire life, you know. They don't make tools like that anymore. But I inherited my dad's old toolboxes, so I have tools that are older than me. And um, I don't stream with Purple anymore, but she used to always talk about this, about how the United States Navy had such a pilfering problem that they started painting the tools pink. They started making the like, and they started making their own tools. When my dad passed away, I found a bunch of um, tools that said the property of the United States Navy on them. <laughs> a bunch. And if you want to come to my house and go through my toolbox, for B, go right ahead. <laughs> I won't stop. I'll open the garage for you. Sometimes I need a mega hammer or a tiny and yeah, antique upholstery hammer. That is true. You know what? I have a mallet, and I was like, what is the point of having a soft mallet until I actually needed to use my soft mallet when I was doing tiles, tile work in my house? Oh, soft mallets for machinists. That, that's a must because you got to, like, bash the tool, the, whatever you're machining, down flat on parallels and... You got to be able to tram the head of the milling machine, which means you got to be able to hit it with something, but not damage it. <laughs> well, don't you use the soft, the rubber ones too for leather working? I thought. Probably. I don't, I never did leather working. Yeah, but they, they have, nowadays they have special um, bougie tools that are made for leather working. It has its own like line now. Because yeah, back in the day, Exactly. 
I have this old monkey wrench from 1920 that I still use, made in Massachusetts. That's awesome. Water and A, I use those for most of my wood projects. The hand drill. I have a hand. That's what I was looking for. It's Ollie Baba, you are a time traveler as well. Because I was looking for my hand drill. It's in here somewhere. It's awesome. I, I play with that thing because I have ADD. I just sit there and just do this every once in a while. It's good for the wrist. <laughs> yep. Uh, never i'm gonna leave that comment into my head <laughs> i don't need to say out loud because i've already got dug into the gutter are you kidding me i'm an american male with my right hand i could break bricks are you kidding me i'm a grown man my left i'm i am literally that mean with the small little left arm and my right arm is like raw <laughs> so you're ambidextrous in some things but not in everything <laughs> so true it's so funny. I do use my left for a lot, though. I drive with my left. Like, I am one of those people, because I was left-handed, they corrected it in school. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, like, I, um, as a, they were, I don't know. They weren't even dictators. They weren't mean. They were just like, you will write with your right hand, because everybody else does. <laughs> They have antique leather tools, sometimes cheap. They don't know the awesome utility. I agree. Soft mallets are awesome. I normally use a lead mallet because good soft mallets are so expensive that I can't just recast the lead. I agree. I agree. Oh, okay. You're answering a question. I was like, I was trying to... Um... Oh, Oh, man. I have this weird picture of Bob Ross in my phone. Apple phones, they make these really, like, weird montages with your pictures and give you options to post them or not. And so they'll, like, take all of Isaiah's baby pictures, and I'm like, you're depressing me. My phone is, like, why are you, what are you doing to me, phone? But they take all my memes, and they're like, oh, these are all your memes because you're a crazy person, and you save memes in your phone. Well, luckily, I don't use my iPhone for anything but tracking avatars and um, shit like that. I'm paying I, for a service I don't use. I don't know. Um, I recently heard someone say that I was in a cult because I own an iPhone. How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> I don't own an think iPhone. That so. person's nuts. <laughs> they were like, you're in a cult. You have an iPhone. You're in a cult. And I was like, what are you talking about? But they're, they're a very... A cult of Google and Android, so I, I can't speak to that. <laughs> this person is weirdly well, disconnected to the world. I think what it is is, like, I have an Android for... That's the phone that I use every day. And when I try to go and I try to use the iPhone for when my Android is like, um, you know, the battery's dead, I wind up Ooh. shutting it off and um, doing all sorts of unintended things because I got the muscle memory for the Android. I'm part of the quilt mafia. <laughs> I'll join that. I have a crappy quilt I attempted over here that my angel is holding up in the back over here. <laughs> <coughs> really quickly, um, Phoenix, will you read this while I'm coughing my face off? Yes. I. Oh, this is too funny. I had a friend. He linked his photos to the family TV, but forgot to remove his nudes and the eggplant pics first. Oops. <laughs> Uh, oops. Yeah, that is a huge oops. It's the sewing machine collectors union. I know. I I feel like I'm. I almost feel like a failure because I only have three. And a surger is a surger count as a sewing machine or is a surger yes. a surger? Okay, so no, I, I can't guess I have four. <laughs> you know, oh, no. I know, like, um, I can't believe I'm admitting this, but I have over ninety sewing machines. So, like, there, there's no in-between. You either own three or four or, like, 150. And it's probably over 90 because I'm not even thinking about what's in the middle bedroom right now. Oh, my gosh. I'm ridiculous. I own a lot of sewing machines, so you're fine. <laughs> right. 
Especially because yeah. I'm jealous that, that that one white wear out eerie is mine. So you'll you'll be down one and I'll be up one. <laughs> I count all my um I count all my sergers, all of them. Even the even the ones that I took apart to make the one that's sitting here that I still use. <laughs> I don't put it in my videos though because it's an unsafe piece of equipment. Like if you reach near the power cord, it will shock you. <laughs> If you don't know what you're doing. So I created an unsafe machine that works. <laughs> I count them, especially when I count, like when I do my actual count. Because um, for, I can't believe I'm saying his name again. There is a YouTuber and he goes by Fred Sanford Sewing Machines. I use him as an intervention for myself. And as long as I don't have like, I'm kind of jealous but the other part of me is like, do you see he's alone? He's not married. Like, <laughs> he's in that big giant house by himself with those sewing machines, Mr. Sewing. <laughs> but at least they're not going to ask him for alimony or try to get his life insurance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's true. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have more. Of, oh, I didn't see that. It's bad. So good. See, Water and I, we're, yeah, Water and I, we're in the same, uh, we're in the same boat, floating on the same ocean. <laughs> you're not floating. You're sinking. <laughs> <laughs> Which is coincidentally what I told that weird hobbit lady when she was like, do you know what that is? I said, yeah, it's a boat anchor. She Still to this day, I almost got beat up by a five foot woman and her three friends because she <laughs> like was so puzzled why I had a sewing machine. Hey, hands. I love Fred Sanford. I'm not bad mouthing him. I'm not at all. I absolutely love him. But like I see, let's 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 talk real family because we're family. Let's have a talk. Um, I see myself in him. When he oh, when he goes in each room, I'm like, oh, that's me. So, like, I use it as a cautionary tale by no means by bad mouthing the man. Um, I'm jealous of his collection, but like, I just, um, I might have to buy a second house for machines, like that comment I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Zephyr has a warehouse with okay, so it is a warehouse. When I watched it, I'm like, bro, you can't live here, there's no way you live here. <laughs> oh. They are fully arranged. I'm talking inventory. I had no... See, everybody knows who he is. Prince Efford held, held so many kids' parts and attachments because he owns every single sewing machine on Earth. <laughs> He's the one I learned the value for fiddle-based sewing machines from. Is there anybody that you've seen um, besides me where you're like, wow, I'm going to use this person as an example and not become a hoarder like that person? Well, I knew someone who um, hoarded guns and he um, hoarded pets and underneath the trailer... If you counted how many stones were underneath the um, steps, you could figure out mathematically how many pets were under there. And I decided not to become like that, although uh, <laughs> that guy was really cool in that he was um, a Florida State Trooper back in the 70s, but he had the side locks and he was a civic. And eventually his son wound up getting them evicted from the um, neighborhood by putting in M203 um, through the front window and into someone else's house. It was a dummy round that was just used for aiming, but still. Isaiah knows exactly what that is. That's why he, I, I had to mute I had to mute him. Around here, we know our calibers. Around here, we know what that is. <laughs> it was a grenade launcher. <laughs> yeah, that's no joke, man. Yesterday was the 25th anniversary of the guy who stole the tank from Camp Pendleton and was unstoppable. Oh, I remember and that. That was on TV. And while I'm still remembering um, 
that guy. He used to mow curse words in his lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, my dad would have beat me like a mule. It would have been worth it. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. I do need uh, new YouTubers. I am weirdly in a show hole. I am like really stale on the stuff I watch on YouTube, even though I'm subscribed to hundreds of people. I feel like I'm in a sh like in a weird rut. It happens so sometimes. Take... Sometimes people get older, they change their content, and I just get bored. That's that's that, I think that's what happens too. Every six months, I get rid of all of the catty um, YouTubers I watch, <laughs> like all the drama YouTubers and all the like, because I watch a lot of trash content. And like about every six months, I'm like, why? Why do I invite this in my life? Because you have a choice on what you watch, and if it makes you yeah. mad, that's kind of on you, you know. Right, you don't have to hate watch stuff unless you're in the mood to hate watch, and then when, and I'll in which case go right ahead. Nobody's oh, some, gonna stop you. <laughs> some of the shells have a they hate watch different flat earthers in order to get see if they can get them banned. The, that would be like Arwen and Pratt and um, some others who. That are watched for getting them banned. I, um, that was on your video today when I saw that thing where that flat earther was like, fight the flat earth. It just means that we think NASA tells lies. I was like, bro, that still doesn't mean the earth's flat. Like, okay, every uh, pick a government agency, they all tell lies. Like, you, you think that's news? Like, <laughs> <laughs> And actually, the word the words that the words that Daniel Pratt was using at the end of it were, "Why is Putin out there proving showing the basis of flat Earth is that NASA lies?" Mm. That was okay, actually right. audio from a real flat Earther. He was a pro Putin flat Earther, still is. I have some audio that. I actually need to make sure that I don't use too much of it because he probably is going to get his channel nuked again because he was threatening a new Gen 6 and then he was threatening to off office holders if there was ever a draft to send them. Um, you know, in other words, he was like, I'm not going to Ukraine to fight the Russians. I would rather fight for Russia. That, that That's... um. I That's that. what a flat earther was. <laughs> really quickly, yeah, this is awesome. There's a typewriter collector that his landlord forced him to hire a structural engineer to survey the building because the landlord was worried about the floor was going to give out. I think about that all the time. Like, I don't think I could live somewhere where I had to um, be under the thumb of somebody because I own so much stuff. I would make someone nervous. On my moving day, they would be like, uh... <laughs> And you should probably just oh. stick to a single story house. The house where yeah. I'm living in, I actually worry that the if you bring too much in here, the floors are gonna fucking collapse. I watched this terrible video on Twitter with these people in a the backyard were dancing and they fell in a covered well. Oh, those the the the, the five ladies who were yeah. the tiniest humans jumping around. I saw. I was that's a nightmare. That's me, dude. That's me in my backyard with my headphones on. I rock in my I boogie in. Like that would be me. Yeah. But I think they had like <laughs> there was like a collective of like five or six hundred pounds plus on that. So I, I mean you're you're not carrying that much poundage. No, I'm a skinny dude. Oh. <laughs> that traumatized me though. When I watched that, I let's see, but I know the structural, like I know my yard. Like I know. <laughs> I know who built it what around here. <laughs> Just saw a comment about floors giving out. Oh, it's that honestly, between YouTube, Facebook, and um, Instagram, I see awful videos that make me not want to leave the house. I know the structural damage you know, from Mac. Finish what you're going to say. I'm sorry. 
I really like uh, sewing machine rehab. She does amazing work with her machines. I need to find that. I need new stuff. Because my YouTube has become kind of stale. And I am like, I like the dude bro culture because that's where I'm from. But like the older I get, it's annoying. You said because that your house, your house was like part of it was like a bomb shelter. Have you actually no. like tried looking for secret passages? Because there were, were places that were built like in the 1950s where it wasn't even disclosed to the city what was built. Um, it's my job. And now that you said that, I'm going to bring my metal detector to my job. That would be awesome because my dad, like there was, he was a, um, there was a lot of things he didn't tell me. So, cause he knows, um, I would go down there and smoke a J. <laughs> so, he, so he probably wouldn't have told me if there was a secret passage and I have all the original plans. I'm going to look. I love stuff like that. I have all the original blueprints and everything. But it, look and but see if the, like something's off from the original the, plans. That would be a dead giveaway. The gym is pretty self-explanatory. It's a giant brick building. That's a part. That's like it's one big brick. The um, where where the stage, the place where I'm in front of the stage, that could have trap doors and stuff in it. I just, I've, you know, it's funny. Like I've been around that place my entire life. So I don't go exploring that much because there's no mystery to me like that. But that would be really cool. You were just talking about people falling into a well that they didn't know existed. And I thought of, um, there's a religious building, not more than say a thousand feet from where I live that it's a fallout shelter. Okay. They literally have the fallout um, shelter sign on it. But at some point in the past, they didn't have to disclose that. There's a weird um, legality about that. And the only reason I know that is because Oregon has different laws than California. When I lived in Oregon, you I would see those signs everywhere in Portland. Like, and it would, you legally have to have the bomb, bomb shelter signs. In California, we, because we have so many private bomb shelters, we don't have those laws because people build their own bomb shelters and they don't necessarily have to let people in them, which is, let me tell you, if, if it was the end of the world and someone was desperately running through the field, I'd let them in the gym. Um, what's that? Uh, Walking Dead style? I would. I hope they know how to farm. <laughs> Cause I'm a farmer, <laughs> you know. But like, <clears throat> it would, that that One wouldn't make sense. And two hands make light work. <laughs> that does make sense though, because there are two bomb shelters on one property, and they're really far off from each other. Oh, see, you're gonna get me in trouble. I'm gonna find a. I'm gonna find a tunnel under my job. I, um, <laughs> when I worked in Portland, Oregon, I worked at on fifth and Taylor at the Carl's jr. In downtown Portland, Oregon. When my boss, um, she got cancer. She gave me the keys and I'll never forget. She, Lori was such a, an amazing human. She looked at me and she's like, don't go in the Shanghai tunnels. And she handed me the keys. Guess where I went. <laughs> like don't touch the red button don't touch the red button <laughs> this building like i had to go through um four doors but um portland is a city that's built on top of a city that's built on top of a city that's built on like it it's undescribable they give tours but like you can see like real 1800s infrastructure in the shanghai tunnels it's it's crazy and you know why they call it the shanghai tunnels Ever heard yeah, the term they... Shanghai? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you get ripped, and then you wake up in the middle of the of the oh, Pacific oh, oh, Ocean Pacific on your way to Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in the Navy now, buddy. <laughs> I'm not going to have to be 
getting the bed because it's past midnight. But great night, to be here and um, hopefully do it next week. It's great seeing you. Does anyone know of an intense program that teaches sewing machine repair other than Carla Soling's house? I'm not intense. You just have to be able to stand pot smoke. Because I'm a close talker and I'm going to smoke and talk. <laughs> I was actually thinking about that. Like if I moved to like some small town, I could open up a shop, be like, you know, sewing machine repair. Mm -hmm. I would be the guy, you know, yes. here we still, we still have people that, um, in England, they call them cobblers, but we still have people that like, um, make shoes, you know, we still have, um, sewing, you know, sewing, we still have tailors that have their own shops. Yeah. We just have the costume shop, which is not the same. <laughs> no. my closet to me is a costume shop do you know i think about this all the time as my signal goes out i'll wait for it to come back i am so gonna whine and cry to spectrum because they did not they're liars they just uh, they shut my wi-fi off to entertain me and then shut it back on <clears throat> They had similar tunnels in London that the Royal Navy would use to shuffle drunks around. They pressed into service. That's awful. Could you imagine? Like, oh, you're going to sober up now because you're in the Navy. There's a program in Texas. I'm checking it out. That's awesome. I'm trying to think of them on the top of my head, but there's a few I follow. Butterfly Google Books, Sincere Sewing Repair. I have, like, honestly, in the past two years, I've become dead to rights on fixing newer machines, too. That's the one thing that impresses me, because the older machines are based on a really sim simple principle. Mm -hmm. Especially the single-stitch machines, because they just go up and down. That's it. <laughs> right? I know. That's one thing I've not... I haven't seen in real life one of the chain-stitch machines. You would be busy all the time, God's doing it if you did machine repair. <laughs> um, that's why every time uh, Linda tells somebody, because all of like the older people, I was a bit of a delinquent as a child. Okay, let's be real. And so when they see, they're like, God, is doing it still around? Oh, I was the definition of like a delinquent as a child. So like when the older crowd, they they're like, you so they are so tripped out. And when I say the older crowd, I mean people in their 70s, because I know a lot of people in their 70s. But the one thing they do is they ask me to repair their machines. <laughs> and I can't say no because I love these people. I've known them my entire life. Like, mm -hmm. these are people that I have some of my earliest memories with. Like they, And they have always been good people. Because I was weirdly raised around Mormons and evangelical Christians, and they were always good to me. They never preached. I hung out with their kids. I didn't even know they were, were religious. You know, they were just good people. And so I returned the favor and they still make blankets for people at my job from my other outreach, um, the outreach program that I work for that helps homeless people like they go out of their way, you know, <laughs> but they have got me lately. <laughs> it is free labor. <laughs> You know, I'm such a sucker. I almost gave a sewing machine away to a woman at um, the Salvation Army. She's like, I need a sewing machine. I'm like, here. She was older. She was like probably in her 60s. I was like, I was like you can have this one I just bought. She's like, no, that's okay. I'm like, she's like, you're really going to give it to me? I was like, yeah. She's like, people are not that nice. You're like, you don't understand how many sewing machines I have. I hope this one works. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have the decency to give you one that I knew was fully functional, so you can take this one with a wing and a prayer. <laughs> well, we were talking about repair, and I'm like, here, you can have this one, you know? Like, not knowing that I'm literally a sewing machine hoarder, you know? Older people are so right. thankful to have machines up and running. Absolutely. And the one thing is, too, like, um, just like how I want another Brother VX809, it's just a weird 80s machine there are specific machines that they want because they they were selling on those machines for 20 30 years and those are always easier to fix 
I have two chain stitch machines, very early types, a Raymond and a Singer ACS, 1899 lightning stitch. Wow. Wow. My friend asked me to repair her sweater, so, and she said she would pay me. I appreciate that she valued my labor but didn't want to charge. You know what? Um, I'm the same way with my mother. I'm the same way. Um, I, I've actually made a bunch of clothes for her, and like, like if, if anything, if I see a stitch wrong or anything, I, um, I fix it. I'm the same way. And my mom offered me money and I'm like, you're my mom. <laughs> I, I don't feel right. Like taking money for you for my, for like labor since you brought me into this planet. <laughs> right. You labored enough to get me. Here. <laughs> it's cool. You, you paid it forward. <laughs> <laughs> You bought me a coffee and then some. Yeah. <laughs> I was shorted, but that's okay. I was proud of my invisible repairs. There's nothing wrong with that. I have Wilcox and Gibbs chain stitch machines. Have to get one. Do you know what? I want to get my um, my Elna Grasshopper. Where I, I have two Elnas that aren't working, and they're just beautiful sewing machines. But like, I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. Like I can get it up to speed, but then it won't. Uh, the grasshopper, especially the grasshopper. I am doing something wrong with it. I love putting on the bolts for an old, for old ladies in, in the 1980s. Some were so old. They remembered Queen Victoria. That's see, that's why I love talking to my grandmother. My grandmother would mention things and I'm like, that's literal history. <laughs> She's the one that always told me that revolutions are never good for women. The reason why she lived in this country was because Pancho Villa would just take wives. And she had um, 12 sisters, not including herself. And they all came to America because there was a revolution going on at the time. This is one of the easier machines my singer has. Do you know, you guys are making me want to like go like back behind you here are all my old singers. This whole process is making me want to pull out my 1906 though. Cause that's the whole reason I, um, I, it, you know, took the bench apart in the first place. Well, might as well just do it. What's why, why are you waiting? No, I'm thinking about what, what kind of top, like, I don't want to marble is too heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not with that cast iron. Um, fake marble. What about fake fiberglass marble? That could be I'm true. trying to get fancy because I have all the, I have the tools to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Butterfly. I'll tell you. As far as older machines go, um, Husqvarna Vikings are better than everything else. Hands down. I'm biased because I have a 1980s Husqvarna, um, which I, the cord snapped. When I find another four pronged cord, that will be the only machine I use. And I have my Viking that just recently died. I can barely get my Elna's going. <laughs> so I would say Husk, Husqvarna, um, as far as something that will outlast modern machines, I feel are all made in the same factory. My baby lock brother, my husband, a Viking, all the machines that were made in 2019 all take the same cord. Kilroy really wants a Formica top on that sewing machine <laughs> table. That's the second time they've mentioned that they're the, like, we are going to die on this hill of Formica. <laughs> You know what? I might have Formica at the shop. I'm saying all this, like, I'm talking big because I could go to my work and literally pull it out of the side bin and be like, ooh, we haven't used this in 15 years. Or, <laughs> Oh, I miss my pops. He used to yell at me about side projects. Now no one's there to stop me. <laughs> you now look at the trouble you got yourself into. <laughs> look at the state of you. Well, the guy who works underneath me, like technically, he should be my boss, but ne nepotism is ugly. Technically, he he like knows way more than I do. The man is in his tile work is just like Picasso. His tile work is amazing. I bought a Jade Elna Supermatic with a full set of cams. I think they charged me 40 bucks. That's unreal. With the cams and everything, that's unreal. Because that mine are missing the cams. Oh. 
you know what's funny um whenever i get the cams for the machines i cut i like literally i'm like okay these are going in a safe place because <laughs> Because you'll get a machine, but like, especially those older machines, people are like, what's this slot on the top? <laughs> That's where all the stuff is supposed to go that you cheated me out of. I love Formica as a desktop. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a pre-veneer plywood, sort of like the original. Hmm. I haven't worked with epoxy in a very long time. You could do... What is that? Carrier... Orion, it's a fake. Um, it looks like wood, but it's not. Or is that the glass Ooh. one? No, that's not the quartz because you don't want anything that heavy. I'll tell you, in my house, I have tile that looks like wood, but it's tile. Yep. <laughs> I thought it was classy. Everybody walks in my house, they're like, this is so, like, in 1980s, you're ridiculous. I, I like it. <laughs> 40 bucks is a steal. That fake marble is horrible stuff to work with. If you use it to be sure to wear dust protection, and <laughs> heaps of people have destroyed their lungs. That's one thing, as someone who already has bad lungs, I um, you would laugh at me. I come like Darth Vader when I'm in the shop. I have to, as I have a joint in my hand. <laughs> Alibaba, what do you consider to be the high-end machines? Usually they go for three, three hundred, three fifty here. Yeah, I'm practically stole that machine. <laughs> That's like um, Ventura, California. Alibaba and I have had this conversation before, but for some reason, um, in Ventura, they I have purchased um, quite a few sewing machines that I've sold for a thousand dollars for forty bucks, fifty bucks with table everything in Ventura. They go straight on the chopping block. They go straight to my my uh, Facebook with my real name, and I sell them immediately. I have to go. I want to, man. I took a trip today in the opposite direction, but I think the kid and I need another beach trip. Ooh. You could do wood as support. With, ooh, that's not a that's not bad. The problem is every time I would go to Ventura, I'd come home with five or six sewing machines, and that's ridiculous. That's where I got all my. Um, Oh, what's that commercial I always play? Get the most fun out of life, being a mother and wife. The touch and sew. The touch and sew. <laughs> I've purchased quite a few touch and sews from Ventura, and they want like a hundred bucks from here in LA. And Ventura, I bought one for nine bucks. They're they're always. Um, um, it it really depends. Honestly, everything in California um, is overpriced. I've sold um, I've sold a 1930s Singer for 900. That was the one that wet my beak. I sold my 1940s. Um, I sh I should look up the serial numbers. I sold that for a thousand, and that's where the addiction began. And then any kind of mini um, singer, anything goes for a thousand. But keep in mind, I live in Southern California. Hey, Joe, how's it going? How's it going? I live in Southern California and we pay high price for everything. Hey, Joe. You know what? Bernina, are, they're so coveted here that like you really don't see them for resale. That's how you know they're quality machines. <laughs> you rarely see them for resale here. Touch and throws? <laughs> okay, so Water Nate, um, I actually did a video about this a while ago. I question the existence of self-widening bobbins because every touch and sew I've ever owned has like exploded on me. Do you know, I was kind of half joking. Um, people lost it on me. They're like, you're too stupid for that. Give me that machine. Uh, somebody else was like, you should try having some patience. <laughs> Go look at the comments. They're still up. They're still up. <laughs> I drive sewing machine collectors crazy because I can barely speak English. I'm like, oh, I just smoked a J. I'm gonna take, and I somehow got this sewing machine together. Like, people have lost it on me in the comments, and and um, butterfly and people like you guys will remember. Like, I got cursed out over using three in one oil. There are people who have unsubscribed. <laughs> I, 
Yeah, I think if it becomes a that much of a religion of how you care for your sewing machines, I don't know if I want you to be my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm obsessed with sewing machines. I absolutely live and breathe them. But at a certain point, I have to be a human and live my life and get on and involve other things in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and what other people do, I try not to let that affect my life. <laughs> But like people um, would lose it on me. They would. Or like there's there if you ever like if you go look at some of the older videos, people are like, learn to read a manual, learn how to use your machine. I can't believe you bought that. And blah blah blah. Well, I like it because it's black and shiny. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I made it move. <laughs> But again, we're on the internet, and no matter what you do, people are going to hate you for it. Yeah. Oh, it's the old green. I actually was watching a stream about that with some young... Um, I like to see with the younger generation. I There's actually some really intelligent young men who are talking about, like, no matter what you do on the internet, no matter what circle you're in, people are going to hate you <laughs> and judge you. That's what happened to my... Um, my um, my grasshopper, it's so gunked, it can't go up to speed. That's what I like about your channel, though. Some people act all wild trying to add excitement, but it's... Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to just be you. Thank you. You have to. Sometimes I don't know what it's called, so it's called a what's it. Have a great people make me tired. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. All oil eventually gums up as it oxidizes. I was wondering about that because my grasshopper, it 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 wants to work so bad, but then when I put fabric on it, it just goes round. And it was like one of the most caked machines I've ever come across. We have people like that in in typewriters too. They fight people all the time over how they're using their typewriter. I want to take a hammer <laughs> and some whole type of machine together. So, what do you do with a typewriter besides type? Are they mad that you can't like with your head picking and not like actual typing? Like how is or that you like slam the cartridge back over to get it to ding? Like oh my god! I I still take pride that I got kicked out of a um. Like, I know I was the youngest person in the group, but I got kicked out of the group for having stickers on a sewing machine. I'm like, yeah, I'm still young and rebellious, even though I'm over 40. <laughs> I know. Now I'm, I'm getting ready to put some stickers on my very first Kenmore because oh, I can't I, see that different Hilda. But my Kenmore, she, she could take some stickers. <laughs> absolutely. Also, if you need someone doing something that will mess things up, you don't beray them you say it nicely and absolutely and you know what's funny like i no 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 oh sorry i fall in love with people that speak appalachian english so my whole gojo thing like i got from hillbilly and it was a bad idea but i learned my lesson <laughs> Are you on the <laughs> i i learned my lesson If you meet up the quilt mafia, if you meet up with the quilt mafia folks, <laughs> well, I'm kind of a part of a of a geriatric mafia. I I have a friend who is a art quilter. He hand sews layers of tulle to do amazing portrait quilts, and the oh, old, wow. the tr yeah oh her work is amazing, and. The old traditional quilters didn't want her to be a part of the quilt world because they're like, you're not a quilter. I was like, she layers and she was a, trained as a fine, a fine artist, as a painter. So like her blending oh. and that she freaking hand stitches them all. It, oh my that God. makes me so angry. That makes me so angry. Gatekeepers and snobs will come up with the dumbest rules that nobody will ever care about. So true. That's actually what keeps me out of quite a few communities. Um, because I look at their chat and I'm like, ooh, they would not like me because I'm everything that that is not a stereotype. <laughs> I dated an Appalachian guy for a while. All the stereotypes about that area were true. <laughs> I know the hillbilly mafia, they're scary. <laughs> oh no. Because they're ex-bootleggers in their family or bootleggers, bootleggers in their families. So they're like 
they're fancy. And people who like, um, I actually follow quite a few people on Instagram that paint on the back of jackets. I think it's the most amazing thing on planet Earth. Yeah. It's freaking artwork. Daddy was a coal miner, sister married a hot field at 14, and let's go. <laughs> no, that's real. That, yep. like, oh, that's real. <laughs> and I'm not dogging hard work, but like, I do hard work. I ride a tractor, but we work smarter, not harder. <laughs> coal, in the, coal mining is dangerous. I don't have the lungs for it. Like, you know, I wanted no, to be an under that would literally kill you. <laughs> I wanted to be an underwater welder so bad, and I failed the first test with the you tank. You couldn't hold your breath long enough? Well, no, my lungs, like with my lung capacity, like under a certain amount of um, pressure, my lungs would collapse. Like, uh. deep enough. And then, and like, it's not like you're, you're welding like at the bottom of the ocean, but you have to be able to sustain being under the boat. Right. For long periods of time while you're welding, you know, or you could be at the bottom of the ocean welding a cable. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that was like my dream job, and I failed, but I moved on. <laughs> I got my welding certs, but right, right just yeah. not for on land and not by sea. <laughs> if land, but yeah. not by sea. <laughs> well, also that job you make three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year. Like it's outrageous because it's a dangerous job, right? So you make a, an unreal amount of money. Like crab fishermen, I knew someone from Africa who was from from Ghana. He was a crab fisherman. He'd come home like a rapper. He was my ex roommate, important greatest roommate ever. He disappeared for seven months, <laughs> and he was uh, respectful and quiet too, because he was from uh, the respectful part of Africa. Like he was the most like well kept human. His food was something to fight over, but that's just cultural differences. I would not survive in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they have Chinese food there because I would not survive. Yeah, I could see that. Like, uh, as someone who doesn't, who can't breathe in general, you get major mental health issues when you have lack of oxygen to your brain. Scuba diving is awesome. It's too bad you don't, you don't get to do it. It's, uh I've I um scuba and stuff like that, but like I wanted to be an underwater welder so bad. And you know, I'd be retired by now because I'm in my 40s. That this was 20 years ago when I took the test. Like, gosh, this was 24. Like, I was a plucky young kid. You know, this was a while ago. <laughs> there was still a 19 in front of the year when I took the test. Shit. <laughs> we'll talk about the olden days. <laughs> I, that was going to be my career because you make a ton. Even back then, I'd be a millionaire. I would yeah. be a multi, 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 you know. What Kilroy's thing is true, though. I think about that all the time because, like, sometimes I'm like, I have to stop myself. Like, I, I'm like, am I spending money because I have it? Like, I'll be at a store and I'm like, I don't need this. I'm, I, I'm like, considering buying it because I can't. You know what I'm right. saying? But That's when why I was it's make do and mend it. No buy. Finish your stuff. <laughs> color blocking. Mend it. I was solid broke for 10 years. And let me tell you, I was the most frugal human you've ever met in your life. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Screenshot I'm gonna... all these things. Here, I'll, I'll leave that up. I'm going to come. I always I come back and watch the stream and, and click I, on it. I'm not ready to do that. I'm afraid to do that. <laughs> I'd have to watch you myself know, at like two times speed though, because a four hours I don't have four hours to watch rewatch myself. <laughs> I zip through and try to find like the highlights. <laughs> um, Butterfly and I would both help you spend that money. Right. <laughs> the sewing machine here and ninja there. I think about that all the time. Like, like when is it that there's too much money? Okay, and I'll give you a perfect example. I live in a three-bedroom um, house community, okay? Most houses around here are three to four bedrooms. Four if you have a, a fancy house. Okay, there is a man who owns a Lamborghini in my neighborhood. Like, I could walk to his house. He lives within two or three blocks. Now, I know prices, houses are really overpriced in my area, but eight of those equal my house. 
nine of those cars equal my house. Like his car basically costs more than like everything else around here. That's crazy. And I well, think how much money he does he? Have? It, he doesn't even actually own it. Is going to be but my. He, he's had it more than two years it. though, and it's the same car. Oh well, is it or at least is two years or three years? That's a good question. I've never even like pondered. I've owned everything. I buy everything. I've never had a lease. I've always owned used cars or like a decent car. Like I was raised by uh, depression era people. <laughs> right. So I, I do. I, I'm not of the mindset of you will own nothing and be happy. No, I want to own my shit. Thank you. It's yeah. Much. And not I have car payments. So. Yay. Here, I'll make you big. Oh, that's I've done awesome. Something today. My crochet schmata is one flower more than it was yes before. <laughs> Liz, every time I hear 7 Eleven, I crave a taquito now. I'm obsessed oh. with those. Or their, their steak taquito, their steak and cheese, which I doubt is steak or cheese. <laughs> I know. I do need to. I have it set so it should timestamp, but. I don't think YouTube's smart enough to understand our live streams, so I actually have to like write the times down. <laughs> Do you know what trips me out is when um, I hit the closed caption box and it starts saying what I'm saying, and I'm like, "Wow, you can translate West Coast English terribly!" Like, like the like they kind of get what I'm saying and they kind of don't. Like, I feel sorry yeah. for the clo for anyone who watches this closed caption. My English is worse than you think. <laughs> the seven, I've said this before. The 7-Eleven by my house, like, they have bomb pizza. Do you know what's so funny? My, um, the rewards thing, like, sent me an email. They're like, are you mad at us? You haven't been to 7-Eleven in a while. Is there anything No, I'm just watching do? my waistline. Thanks. No, thanks. <laughs> well, their prices have hot gone up. been on this. Pick it for three hours and it looks raunchy. I will feel really bad if my son gets diabetes because I let him eat anything he wants. And so we, I've kind of like, like, cause we splurge a lot and he had a slurpy habit. And I was like, I was like, this has got to be bad. Like this can't be good. No. <laughs> like, and so we stopped, I've stopped going so much. I'll get you a steak and cheese taquito. <laughs> obsessed with those things, Liz. I'm obsessed. That stresses me the hell out. All I, all, and I hope the used car market calms down in my area. Oh, let's see. And that's another thing. People have lost their damn mind here in California too about used cars, about reselling anything. Bro, I know your truck is worth a thousand dollars. Why are you selling it for ten grand, eleven grand? Because of like, the chip shortage and all of the stupid stuff with the new cars. They know that there's a the um cash for clunkers ruin yeah, the used yeah. car market. So there's just there's not as many as there used to be. <laughs> I used to <laughs> thank you, Water Name. I used to flip cars. That's why I freak out because that's where my like I I got put on some game and someone taught me how to make money and like, but you can't make money when the prices are just, they, they've literally priced me out of buying those cars. It's not worth, I can't make any money off of it. You know, not even right. buying lockers isn't worth it anymore because now they tack all these new fees on, uh, um, on storage lockers and stuff because the vultures came out after, after 2020 people couldn't afford to pay their bills and all the vultures came out. And so they passed, they like, they upped the prices now. Does he know how to eat right, though? Um, I actually, um, I am weirdly almost a vegetarian. I eat nothing but, I eat like a rabbit. But I just, I eat meat once a day. But I actually, um, I actually eat a lot of vegetables. And I eat breakfast with no meat. I Sometimes I'll eat lunch with no meat. I'm weirdly, a, I eat like my ancestors. <laughs> I am weirdly a vegetarian. Not even on purpose. It's because I have health issues. Nope. I eat meat because my ancestors did. And pickle and sauerkraut is a food group of all to its own. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed with pickles. I, I eat a lot of stuff with pickles on it. I'm obsessed with them. I love... <laughs> I had a... Um, 
in the uh, when I lived in Portland, I lived next to us. How's it going? <laughs> I lived next to a 7 Eleven and I had a Slurpee every night for almost two years. Almost. <laughs> I'm surprised I can see him without my glasses on. <laughs> right. You, you, you haven't missed a chat yet. <laughs> See, but the thing is, I, I drank so many Slurpees, I felt like it was rotting my esophagus, so I stopped. I have no barge in my I had to pay a small fortune for my tiny car when the truck was totaled. <laughs> the used car market has gone crazy everywhere. There are several year, years old selling for more. Than, I'm glad to hear that because I feel like the world has, like, so inflation is everywhere then. <laughs> yeah, well, the entire world has gone crazy. I need to hear this because I feel like I'm losing my mind sometimes. When I go to the grocery store and I'm like, why is lettuce so expensive? Or like, why is this? Like, I'm no, gonna that's tell why you, we're my the virgin black market eggs. Oh, man, bring the black market. I'll be, a, I'll be a warlord. I grow my own food. Bring it. <laughs> bring it. <laughs> It's crazy. I'm glad. I, I'm not glad that it's crazy in Australia, but I'm glad that like I'm not the only one suffering. It's crazy here. It's crazy. And my, my um, it's funny you'd say that about about the chips. I get calls from Ford all the time. They want to buy the Flex because it has chips. If I ever go vegetarian, toast toast me in a rubber toss room because I you know, toss me in a rubber room because I've officially lost it. No, I eat a lot of meat. I eat ribs and chicken i eat like bill clinton but i've just taken my fourth meal out of the day <laughs> so i eat like a huge dinner my my geneticist genetic said that from my english side i absorb iron like a champ but from my african side my body doesn't know what to do with it i think that's what it is so i eat a lot of like fruits and vegetables but i had a friend from belgium okay he he was for all intent and purposes African, but he was from Belgium. He went Hollywood, what I call Hollywood vegetarian. He got sick. He like completely he was a big six four giant dude. <sighs> Excuse me. And he, he basically um cut iron out of his diet because he quit eating meat and he got sick. Yeah, I well, and some people say they're vegetarian, but they're actually carbotarians and don't actually eat any fruits or vegetables. <laughs> I couldn't exist without fruits or vegetables. I don't know, like, because I get sick of eating just potatoes. Fear. I, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. I could not do it. <laughs> and I eat, a, I eat a lot of bacon. I That's why I'm a bad uh, Muslim or um, or Jew, because I eat a lot of bacon. I eat a lot of bacon. Oh, Jews eat bacon. No, Jews do not eat bacon. <laughs> oh, oh, they Kelly, don't? You're up to 33% Neanderthal tonight, up from your 12% from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hammer this out. Where okay. is my phone? So there's a certain percentage. There's a certain percentage of this earth that is um, Mongolian. There's a certain percentage. Like if you're not sub-Saharan sub African, you have um, Neanderthal DNA because our ancestors outbred them. They always like to say like, oh, we destroyed them. No, we just, we turned them into us. We started having sex with them. And we turned them into us and we became one species. It's not even rocket science. It's just a lot of Barry White. <laughs> But I want to look that up. Hold on. How much oh, of our no. DNA is Mongolian? What are they? Some Jews. It's the Orthodox Jews actually keep kosher, but not all Jewish sects keep kosher and anti-pork. And one of my friends, oh, Nadine from music school, was at the Chinese buffet on Yom Kippur eating crab legs and she would eat take a bite and then she would say bad jew and then she would <laughs> take another bite <laughs> it, was so, it was so funny <laughs> oh that's funny or or like my pops used to say water nate um too, they didn't speak the same language but they woke up smiling at each other 
Oh, poor Harry Belafonte. That was another death this week. Oh, really? I don't know why that made me think about that. That was a bad segue. Oh. <laughs> I actually watched he he cared. I watch a lot of documentaries with him and Lena Horn where they would talk to the younger African American generations. Like he was awesome. He was an amazing <laughs> human. Oh, I can't do rocket science. I'm 42. <laughs> Oh, 16, um, 16 million people on this planet are descendants of Genghis Khan. That's 0.05% of people on this um, on this planet. He still is around. The guy ruled for a thousand years. You know, history is nothing but lies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this is How so much true. about DNA is Neanderthal? No, you're not showing up. Also, there's, a Ju- there's Jewish as an es- ethnicity and Jewish as a religion. Yes, and... I am True. probably part of the, I'm not a practicing Jew, but ethnically 100% Ashkenaz, or not 100%. But. So if you're, um, if you're, if you're of European descent or Asian background, one or two percent. So the, so yeah. the Neanderthals are still around too. <laughs> yep. Uh, salt and vinegar. That is a good one. <laughs> We are losing all the good ones. Bobby Caldwell. Absolutely. Oh, not Bobby Caldwell, dude. Now I got to go watch a Harry Belly Fonte movie because I was raised by old people and I have a few on VHS. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're actually learning things on the Godless Sewing channel. You know, I watch these documentaries and one, something should stick, you know? I figured, but we're not like, here to actually learn anything. That's just a side effect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is actually uh, my weekend. This is me letting my my hair, my proverbial hair down. Let me brush my eyebrows. <laughs> my mom used to smoke camels. I man, I smoked camels forever. I wonder if I gave him my camel cash, would anything happen? My friend was at his storage unit when it happened to be where Luther Vandross had a storage unit. Luther gave him a whole bunch of shirts. I would have fallen on the ground because I guarantee they were designer. He would wear them in when his band played the Luther the Luther collection. That is amazing. When you woo, woo, woo. I know all about Luther. <laughs> Turkey bacon, part healthy, part rebel. Nice choice. My sister was a health freak. I'm over. Uh, I really don't like turkey bacon or brown rice. Have you seen the sketch about banana boat song being too loud? And no. When I'm having a bad day, I put that Beetlejuice um, skit on all the time. Or if I found some, like if I got top shelf from the dispensary, I love that scene. I love that scene. If all this is true, I will hunt people and do that. I'm going to um, pop out real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. Now I have that daylight coming. Me want to go home. Now I have that song totally. I have that completely stuck in my head. Now I want root beer. Whoever brought up Bargs the other day, um, I blame you because now um, I'm craving Bargs and I might have to Amazon it because they don't really sell it around here. And I've been looking. <laughs> I have to like go into LA, LA to find Bargs. In my town, they really do not sell um, like really sugary, crummy stuff. They have this really weird thing where they don't sell it. So like... Um, Cheetos made this stuff. It's called Chester's popcorn. It was it was popcorn dusted with the Cheetos cheese dust. They stopped selling it in my town because they called it un, unhealthy. Now I'm craving stuff that I can't buy. <laughs> oh, coffee. Does anyone else like veneers? Veneers. I saw Bargs today at the gas station, thought of it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Bargs. Oh, my gosh. From Batcham, turn over, turn, turn her over, drive right. How's it going, Dove? How's it going? 
I'm allergic to normal kinds of ghetto get the ghetto get the natural kind. <laughs> Is it a drink? Why didn't I? Why didn't I used to be able to get Vineyard's Grape Pop? Oh, it is a drink. Okay. Barg's in a glass bottle. Oh, Gar Barg's. Um, I can taste it. Oh. Is the largest ginger ale in the world. Oh, okay. Never heard of it. It was abandoned in the 70s. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, man. I was more of a um, Canada Dry kind of person. <laughs> I know that's a total West Coast. Uh, I don't know if is that a West Coast um, thing. I was addicted to Canada Dry for the longest time. <clears throat> oh no, I have Ghost Face Killer stuck in my head. Canada Dry. Now I have a ton of Ghost Face in my head. Oh, okay, it's an East Coast. Uh, awesome, awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you, Dove. Used to love Slurpees, allergic now. Do you know what's so funny? Um, Liz knows I'm allergic to everything, but I like technically I'm lactose intolerant, but I still eat cheese. I made tacos tonight. <laughs> Oh, I made tacos. I'm going to go off after this stream. I forgot I made tacos. And because I'm extremely unhealthy, I fry the shells in lard. And I have a taco drying rack and everything. A taco drying rack? Is that like yeah. the Italian, the Mexican version of Italian ladies' pasta drying machines? I mean, Ooh, instead of the, I like, I, um... I get the lard bake, uh, you know, I get a boiling in the, in the pan and then I dip the, the tortilla in it. And then I put it on the drying rack and it, and it dries stiff. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear me when I was taking apart the, when I said, I need a longer screwdriver. And I was like, that's what she said. I'm going to cut that. We I'm going to cut back. I'm going to come back and cut the hell out of that. Oh I used my to do commentary. that. <laughs> I used to do that in, back when I used to stream with other people. When I'd see something really funny, I would cut it out and make it a short. Oh. I can't. I can get Canada Dry. I'm obsessed with Canada Dry. I was never a ginger ale person. <laughs> oh, my human is being funny. That that this one that. <laughs> this might be my human. <laughs> That's right. The computer camera is very broad. <laughs> oh, that, oh, shit. Did I get on camera doing stuff I didn't want on camera? Well, too late now. We won't talk about it. Don't clip that part. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Do you know, honestly, I told you yesterday, I was watching Esther's stream and I was traumatized the other day. And I think that stream is still up. Someone flashed on camera and I was like, oh! <laughs> I, I, your kid was in the room. <laughs> God damn, you needed oxygen, and it's always when the kids in the room. It's always when the kids in the room. Not that that crazy stuff is never when I'm alone by myself. It's because I, you know, that's the cool thing about cell phones. I can walk around, um, have a great night, butterfly. I can walk around with my cell phone, you know, and uh, while I'm cleaning, doing laundry, you know. And someone bombed her stream, and I was like, "That's a penis! Oh my god!" Like. People are so lonely. People are so lonely. <laughs> but you know, like I said, it's something that I, I always like. It was so weird. It was so weird. Oh man, I gotta catch up with the chat. Looks like who? Looks like Caitlyn Jenner's mom died too. Oh man. I already know my mom. My mom is super religious, and she always says, "Looks like they're opening the gates." Human beings do things in waves. We 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 uh, we do. That includes um, 
Don't ever recognize the troll in <laughs> There's actually one person I'm keeping my eye on. I'm surprised he hasn't gone live. Let me see if he has. Good night, no, Joe. Oh, no. I think Joe's saying good night to Butterfly. To, uh, Butterfly. Oh, oh that's human. crazy. <laughs> Just don't take Dolly yet, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just search for twerking lessons to show my mom what twerking was to compare to the twist. One of the suggested videos was full on close up of Lady Park. Oh my God. <laughs> mom, cover your eyes, cover your eyes, mom. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's hilarious. Do you know? Um, I have to, I had to stop myself sometimes because I. Uh, Every once in a while, I'll see a crazy video, and I'll show it to Isaiah, and I'm like, this is beyond his age. I can't show him this. Like, this is, like, this is crazy. But I do show him the Russian dash cams. <laughs> when people Where jump out of their cars. And... <laughs> oh, They're crazy. Oh, They're crazy in Russia. They jump out with, like, full-on, will point, like, hooters at each other. Like, it's They're crazy. I'm going to um, run real quick. Sometimes oh. I feel like I'm too old. I got to go check on the kid and run to the sewing room. Oh. It's okay. I, I think I can hold down the fort. Let's see if I can actually get Loki on screen. He's like, you have little strings. Let me, let me see. Come on, cat. They're not on the stream for me. They want to see a cat. Russian dash cams jump out with AK and everything. I know, seriously. They're like 50 cals. They, they've got all sorts of fun stuff over there. And here we're just trying to have electric tanks, and that's not going to go over very well. We can go two miles, and then we need four hours to recharge, please. Crazy fast driving on sheer ice uh, on a logging road. I know. Well, they've had such trauma over there. They have no, it, it's kind of the culture and they've suffered a lot. So what do they feel? What do you have to lose when you had the death of the czar, Trotsky, Lenin, like, your life has sucked for the past hundred years over there. Oh, I do. I don't, don't tease me about a lot of, I, they look so cute with those square tops. I kind of want one, but the cost of getting it shipped over just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it wasn't a camel toe, it was the whole toe. <laughs> it was the whole orchid. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Russian dash cans are no joke. They like LA's crazy. I've seen I've seen crazy stuff and Russian dance cams make LA look peaceful. <laughs> Cuz you don't have all the vodka. Yeah. Around here drinking and driving is not necessarily um <laughs> Okay, so that is free of Froofers that he's trying to be cheeky about. That's <laughs> She's made her I'll appearance. When I lived in Arizona, they, I don't know if they still have them. They had drive through liquor stores and they would give you cups of ice <laughs> for your drive home. <laughs> oh my God. That's so oh, God. Keep in mind, this was in 1999, 2000 ish when I lived in Arizona. <laughs> I've traveled around. Electric tanks is the biggest joke. Electric tanks is the biggest joke around. They'll need a big generator truck just following them anywhere. Oh, they'll be not, you know, America, we're too violent to have electric tanks. Americans would never have electric tanks. We need things that can go fast and destroy things. Seriously, because we can't run. A, dude, is this, if, do we have enough young folks or folks our age who could actually pass the, any of the military fitness tests? I'm not sure I could, and I'm kind of upset about that, but that's a me problem. I'm more concerned about the mental health 
than physical because I watched this one video and they were asking these these young um, women why did you join the Marines? Every have, did you see that on Twitter? Every oh, I saw it, but I didn't listen to the audio. Every single one was like, I don't know. But you can't ask kids in boot why they join the military because they're getting their butt kicked. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they're purposely getting tortured so that they get conditioned so they're in the military, you know? True. And, and it was either a family legacy or that was their only option. And they and there's what's there's nothing wrong with choosing a life of service. Oh, so you guys have drive through liquor stores, too. Interesting. In Arizona, they had um, the highest D. When I lived there, they had the highest DUA right, rate in America. And they were like, gee, we wonder why. And yes, Waternay, I have seen that um, bank heist in South Africa. I'm addicted to watching train wreck videos on the internet. It's because I grew up <laughs> watching action movies. And now humans right. are, like, recreating that. <laughs> in Russia, they drink the whole bottle of vodka, break the break the landa, and then the they the landa. And then the while lana. driving the next, the next While bottle. drinking the next bottle. <laughs> yes. And then they go fight bear in the <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that, that video of that guy working out? That other guy's punching him, and the bear is pushing the tree? Oh, God. That is the most Russian video ever. And they're in the snow. Yeah. Of course they are. Because <laughs> what's Russia without snow? Except for the part that's next to the Mediterranean where it's warm. <laughs> I was about to say, there, there, there's some Russians with tans. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them lie. <laughs> oh, no. I know. There's, there's water and beaches. <sighs> oh. They wouldn't let me in Kilroy because of my um my love. I was a cavalry scout station in Bavaria when the Berlin Wall. That's awesome. You are ten years older than me because I remember watching it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do about these numbers? <laughs> my non-cultural appropriation. <laughs> I'd have to commit perjury to join the military because of my mental disorders and mental disabilities. So I don't, you know, at this point, they, you know, I wonder about that. Like um, at my job, we always talk about how we're surprised they, they don't have like rooms filled with kids with ASD in the military because they're really like, give them a drought. They'll take someone out in 10 seconds. It's like a big video game. <laughs> right. I've seen the Russian channel where the lady has a pet panther. It was abandoned by its mom. It's bigger than the Rottweiler. They all, that's see, I would never own something that could drag me off, except for that girl I dated that was six four. I miss her. <laughs> I was Canadian. I was Canadian at the C and D base for a bit. Oh, that's awesome. Many half. Oh, I miss Heffen Weizens. I actually know how to say that. <laughs> no, it's Heffenweizen. You still said it wrong. Heffenweizen. Heffenweizen. I don't have an accent. It's, I'm it's an American. A, I. That's the. I have the West Coast accent. I. Anything else beyond that, it's like if I try to have an accent, I sound like a poo, and then it's just <laughs> racist. So I do not do accents at all. ASD is one of my disabilities. Apparently, the reason why they don't want people with ASD in the military is that they almost always kill themselves right after they finish boot. That's crazy. That's crazy. But um, there are some crazy statistics about people with ASD in general. So that's probably that's right on par for a course, actually. It's because they I could see it because they just drive and drive and drive and drive and drive people. That is alarming. I could totally see why. It's um, autism spectral disorder, but I say, ASD. Spectral I, disorder. Say, <laughs> I say ASD to be fancy oh, and our doctor over doctor it spectral, <laughs> it's spectrum. <laughs> it's my smoking. This, do I have to start singing Elvis? This is my smoking time of the night. Everything's kicked in. I failed. I failed with my vest. I'm man enough to admit it. I'll finish it tomorrow. That's all right. You took in the sewing machine base and ripped it apart. So that is true. That, that was a win. I forgot about that. There is progress in this room. <laughs> I forgot. Right? Or, or I don't progress destruction. It's all the same thing, I guess. I was rejected by the army because I couldn't write real well. I was an athlete and was an average. 
at reading and math. In America, if you're good at sports, they will pass you in every class. I knew someone who went to college, had dyslexia, could barely read, and has like two or three college degrees because he played professional football. And he's a complete loser. <laughs> That's my sister's ex-husband. He's he he, but um, he um tested positive for CTE. Mm, but that's still, who I'm gonna after football in a while. But I'm gonna say this as someone who was raised around people with disabilities and has lived his entire life around people with that are special needs. That does not exonerate you from violence. Just because you've been hit in the head a bunch, it's an excuse, but you still should be held responsible for your action. True, but that's also one of the things where you... It's kind of like seizure. People who have seizures and get angry and don't understand what's happening. God, so you made the world a safer place during this dream. I imagine, yeah, I, I imagine that machine going over when you're... <laughs> that is like Final Destination. Um, I think about that all the time. But I have really good brakes. I have trailer brakes on my truck because it's made to um, haul things 10 times like its size. On popular opinion, we should abolish college and high school sports. I, I agree. We should make them all all um I don't know co-ed is is uh, no, yeah. but, but um oh, excuse me. Oh, what's the word club and have it be for fun and not just so you can get sold a lie of having a professional career when you probably won't. I'm the same uh Mark Short. I'm the same. Honestly, being forced to play sports was a bit awkward as a kid. I'm really, I was semi good at sports, but I was better at surfing. I was better at like the one, the one man sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, so find what you're, what that person's into. Sports, ugh. I think we should. You know, I think we should push physical activity and get rid of. Um... Do you think human beings are driven by competition though? I, I think there it that is a thing, and I think that's what why sport is appealing. Also, most of us are not designed to have like day jobs where we sit on our butt all the time. Mine, it, I started a YouTube channel because mine drove me crazy. I miss being out in the field. <laughs> I'm in the office, like looking out the window, like it's air conditioned in here, but I miss being outside getting a tan. <laughs> If you have stuff like that going on, you need to take special steps to prevent a tragedy the same way you plan not to drive when you've been drinking. I agree. Thanks for clarifying, Mark. That's interesting. Oftentimes, avid readers are also good at writing. I don't know. I've had med he head injuries, and I wonder if that's why I've digressed in my older age. <laughs> in my last car accident, um, I, like... It was traumatic. I bring it up all the time because it literally took me a month to walk again. And I think I hit my head so hard. I forgot, like, I forgot college. <laughs> it happens. And concussions are cons consecutive. So the more you have over time, the longer it takes to heal and the more severe they become. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I, it made me appreciate um, walking. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell I, you. like, <laughs> Oh, we talked about, I shared mine yesterday. I had to, <laughs> my expensive ankle, and I had to relearn how to walk. <laughs> As an active person, it's still to this day, it was the strangest feeling opening my eyes and being like, I can't move the lower half of my body. And it wasn't because yeah, it was... Have that, but... <laughs> It wasn't even paralyzed. I was just in so much pain. Uh, my body locked up. Mm -hmm. And it took it took a full month for me to get back on the horse. Literally. For all I of gotta them. find. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> more like two. More like a couple months to get back on the horse. But like anything else, you don't appreciate it until you lose it. Like no one right. cared about. Um, 
like, and this is cliche, but no one cared about AIDS or HIV until Magic Johnson got it, until Ryan White got it, until people that you, that looked like you or people you cared about got it. You know what I'm saying? Or rich people who. <laughs> and the sad oh, thing is now, Magic Johnson literally. Um, now, no medical advice. He did not cure AIDS. He got the treatment for leukemia and no longer has the signs of HIV or AIDS in his blood. But he's a multi-billionaire. Right, because that and stuff's it, expensive. <laughs> the treatment for leukemia, like, that would put me in the poorhouse. That, that would that would bankrupt me. Right, and, and that's with... Pri oh, the whole... Pri don't get me started on the private insurance racket. It just makes me very angry. Dove, I like to find a good mix between the two. I'm an extreme pothead, but I also try to work out every day or at least walk or like, you know, and I'm the real life smoky. <laughs> you got fired on your day off. <laughs> I'm a, I am. That's the one thing where people look at me and they're like, you still smoke. After all these years, you still smoke pot. <laughs> that's the only thing you still smoke. So you gave that up all true. the other things. I haven't had a drink in, um, it's going to be 12 years. I ha And this summer will be six years. I have not smoked um, a, any nicotine whatsoever. You know, so mm -hmm. it's one of those things. Oh, so, get out of here, Liz. I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. The private insurance thing upsets me greatly as well. Yeah, I have... Um, I got dropped. I got dropped from Blue Hell Bruce Blue Shield because I admitted I told them the truth that I have asthma and I smoke cigarettes. This was 14 years ago, but they dropped me. I, I had them for a month, and then they, um, and they literally sent me a letter saying, "Here's your money back. Um, you're uh, you're uninsurable." And then this this plucky young president named Barack Obama came <laughs> and made it enforced insurance companies to insure people like me <laughs> <clears throat> thank you Waterne. <laughs> i don't know it's so funny how they they will screen you out of certain things but they don't say like oh you have a liter of soda or a gallon of soda habit a day you get kicked off the rolls too we're just gonna pay for your diabetes treatments like I never thought about where, that. Where does the, the line drop? Where do we draw the line? Do we demonize some things, but not others? I do, Dove, and I can't wait for this year. I, I grew so much last year that like I was drinking it up until a month ago. I'm so stoked. And it's already sprouted. That's why I'm kind of mad that it's going to rain. I might, I'm going to be out there covered with an umbrella standing <laughs> over my plant. No, it needs to get beaten up a little bit. Plants, the secondary metabolites that make plants good are the stuff that abuses them. Like, um, as the, as the weeks went on in my videos, I was just so next to it. And a few people didn't realize why I was like in my garden, not knowing I was next to an almost nine foot plant. It was cool. Last year was glorious last year. Like I, I had so much, I didn't know what to do with it. Last year was actually absolutely glorious. But now I, I am a wizard when it comes to making tea with that stuff. <laughs> I do push-ups. I do push-ups, but, like, I like tacos and burritos and donuts. And, no. like, and, um, oh, I'm, my new love is ham and cheese croissants. Oh God, I'm, no! I can't do shit like that. I, I'm, I don't. I'm not my 600 pound life. No, no, McDaddy's. So my excuse, my excuse is, um, nothing's open at four o'clock in the morning except for the donut shops by my house. Then you need more food, better food in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Taking notes, Phoenix. I, I don't have a good plant history except for my 12 tall broccoli. <laughs> That's super impressive. Do you make uh, flavored tea with a homegrown? Yes, I had to learn because you have to mix it because um, it smells like burnt corn. 
especially the, the more swaggy stuff because I grew like top tier stuff. And then like my second pot was kind of like Reggie <laughs> to, to show my age, <laughs> to show my age. And so um, I had to start mixing it because it um, – it was. It smelled like burnt corn. It was the weirdest thing. But then I drank it, and I'm like, "This is the greatest thing ever." I don't care if it smells like burnt <laughs> corn. Oh my god, it works. Because even the Reggie stuff, once it, once it gets in your bloodstream, like it's unreal. It's better than smoking it, you know. Hydroponic fertilizer. So fun fact. Um, on the other side of the town, on on the way to my job, they had this hydroponic store. <laughs> Um, my, uh, I was going to grow, um, what are they called? Space buckets. And I like, I was like, oh, okay. I have, I have buckets. I got all my stuff ready. I went to the hydroponic store and it got closed. So now I have to drive like 40 miles to another one. My town is becoming, um, that town in Footloose that out, that outlaw dancing. <laughs> <laughs> They outlawed. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think it's just your town. I think that California is trying to outlaw everything that makes people happy and that actually makes their state run. And they don't re aren't going to re aren't going to realize it until it's gone. It, your state's going to be non-functional. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to push out people like me, the only ones who can afford to live here. That's what they're going to do. They're going to push out all the people that are viable, who have jobs, who who actually make this state run. We're going to take our equipment and leave and go somewhere well, where we can have our oh, trucks. And <laughs> the, the housekeepers who can't afford, like, who can spend two hours on the bus to get to your freaking house to clean it? Or True. All, all this other shenanigans. You're going to arrive home and find a sign on the door that they moved in somewhere. More appropriate. <laughs> and you know what's funny? We make more money here than um, a couple, than like, we literally are the third largest economy in the world. California makes more money than every, than, than, than um, countries. But we're literally pricing ourselves out where you have to be a millionaire to live here. The that movie, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, was supposed to be a movie. It wasn't meant to be real. <laughs> they're they're pushing out. No one can afford to live here. <laughs> California is killing their golden goose. I used to use can of fertilizer when I was growing. It was really good stuff. You know what, Mark? Um, last year I took a lot of your advice, and because of you, my plant was like almost ten feet when I finally chopped it down. So I'm listening. I am listening. <laughs> Here at the Godless Sewing Channel, I am always off topic. That's kind of me. My um, ADD sewing. Hey, look, there's a squirrel. I'm going to start this project <laughs> and then go. <laughs> I literally have um, four projects going at once. And I, and I never stopped making hats. <laughs> obsessed obsessed i i have not stopped making hats i just um i have Stop nothing talking to report about yet. it <laughs> no i just have nothing good to report yet because i i i feel like i'm skipping the middle stage and so i'm going for home runs like I, i'm skipping a few steps like i want a pork pie but i have to learn how to make a hat first Right. You haven't done your due diligence at the millinery shop yet to be like, exactly. you're going to have exactly. to have a bloopers video reel of like, and these are all the hat fails. And then, oh. Look at these 75 hats. Yeah, exactly. oh. <laughs> it's kind of like um, the, la the last plan I grew took me five years to finish smoking. I wish. <laughs> I wish I had like a freaking like a silo full of pot. In Cali, I'd be rich in ten minutes. Right. Sell it for ten mil and move. <laughs> no, they've really clamped down on home growers. Like it's so weird here in California. They want 
only like Menacito to sell you part. Like they want the million because Marlboro owns fields. Like, you know, they only want like the big companies. And so if you're Joe Schmo and you grow more than you legally can, they put you in jail and plus illegal. And we have THD caps here too. So if your THC is really high, you legally can't sell it, which come on. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, we have crazy THC um, caps here. You know, it's really funny when, when pot got legal legalized, we actually, we were like so happy. No one realized that a year later they passed a law that was capping the THC um, that was capping the levels. So it could only be over a certain amount here legally. So it's just, another, it's just another thing they can throw you in jail for. I gave up more guys for Passover. <laughs> yeah, it's um that is the one that's the one downside of living here because the weather's paradise, the people suck a little bit less. But we get taxed for everything. Everything. It's weird to me when I go places and I don't have to pay sales tax. Or I go somewhere and I don't have to um sign a loan for a cheeseburger. They're trying to legalize it without legalize. I, I've said this a million times. No one knew it was legal to smoke in your car until Pac got legalized, and they were like, "It's now illegal to smoke in your car." And I'll never forget. There was someone who asked a logical question. Wait, it was legal to smoke this entire time. <laughs> there was, there just wasn't a law against it. A sales tax is brutal. Kilroy, the fact that you asked that question kind of makes me laugh. Yes. Yes. We pay tax on everything. Um, and like if you buy soda, they assume you're going to recycle it. So they you pay a, a what's called a CRV. So you pay a tax because they assume that you're going to recycle it. So you pay a tax for the recyclers. <laughs> We're crazy. We're crazy here. There's a there's a non tax on non prepared food like uh, head of lettuce. I don't pay taxes on. I'm gonna go test that. <laughs> you're gonna have to not buy any. Cake. You're gonna actually have to look at your receipt or not buy slurpees and cakes on your way out. Matter of fact, I'm such a weirdo. I keep my receipts. Let's see, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, cans of Friskies. A peacock, um, <laughs> four yards of peacock material, and what else did I get? Clear eyes. It was a hundred. It was a hundred and seven. A hundred and seven dollars. Where's my tax? Hold on. Oh, and I uh, I did get a primey. I get I did get a primey teen mist too. If you guys are wondering why it's so much, because the primey was twenty five bucks. Ooh. I was gonna go thirty for the fabric. <laughs> well, it always like equals out to that much. It always equals out to that much because um, I'm trying to look where the taxes though, because we get so taxed here. I'm trying to see how much did I pay in taxes. Usually they tell you. Oh, it's like tax on each item now. I paid three dollars. Sorry, I paid three dollars tax on my fabric. That's a rip. Three thirty-eight. I know. Well, I know Oregon also does not have sales tax. Pardon me. <coughs> if you put a hundred four, if you put a four mm -hmm. light bulb inside and do cuttings, you can have two or three plants inside and grow of them. I, I combined seeds and like that's where I got the giant tree last year. I got so lucky. I got so lucky. And it's actually they're actually growing out in the same way this year. But I have it like in a like in an open area with planters. Like I'm a farmer. <laughs> Not where I live. So cold, I wish. We have perfect weather. That's why I'm so mad that raccoon ate my pine the last pineapple. <laughs> Laugh out clear as I haven't used that since I was a teenager. I, um, you know, you got, what's, what's up with that? These eye drops that had placenta or amniotic fluid in it that's causing people to have eye issues. 
Like, A, where are we sourcing this from? And B, gross. Ew. See, I'm scared to, because of fentanyl, I'm scared of everything. You should be. (laughs) And so now, um, repeal the 16th Amendment. (laughs) Oh, he's getting crazy. Let me know if I need to, if you need to kick him out. I'll kick him in. (laughs) You're fine. You're fine. I'm 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 more tripping on how much I paid, Pe- like and there are no secrets here in the house of sewing. I paid a hundred and seven dollars on a whim at Walmart. This is why I shouldn't go. That cat should thank me. <laughs> you need to get a Chewy subscription and have the the cat food delivered to your house, so you're not tempted to go to Walmart. That's the problem. That's the problem because I'm like, oh, I need a candle. I need some more no. thread. Oh, I need fabric. Need <laughs> Why would you out that in there? Oh, it's because of the tax. I don't care. I don't care. I spent so much at Walmart. It's not even funny. And I went there just uh, um, on a whim because I, I like wanted to see. Um, basically, I was testing out the radiator in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> Excuses. Why would you put that? Oh, put that in there. Oh, okay. I get it now. <laughs> I live on Front Street. I'm a transparent human. <laughs> I only know the first two. Oh, gosh. I have this really dusty, boring book that has all the amendments in it. I used, when I was a comprehensive YouTuber and I used to like, I look at my old notes. I cared so much. I would like come to live streams with seven pages of notes. People are like, oh, God, this sewing is so intelligent. No, I just copied down crap I heard on YouTube, you know, and on the news. <laughs> they get you at Walmart, though. You go in the, you go in there for a sack of flour, and next thing you know, you have a whole cart of stuff. It's so true. It's so true. Where else can I get oil for my car, Lysol, fabric, you know, cat food? I go off. I go off at walmart i mean put yeah. ambiotic fluid in your eye drops that makes uh, yeah, me that's the thing i don't know i do not understand but i keep seeing this warning coming up and i'm like wtf <laughs> did they say what kind i uh, no i need to okay let me consult i use clear but... eyes because <laughs> it's the only thing that still works on me visine makes me look even more stoned <laughs> It's, it's started to have the opposite effect. Yeah, it does not work. It does not. And one time at my job, like someone like totally called me out and like I was so embarrassed. They're like, are you stoned? Then you feel even more stoned. You're like, no, I'm not. Your eyes are pink. Why are you calling me out? <laughs> they were They were totally calling me out speech and the ability to defend it they were totally calling me out i was embarrassed i'm still mad at that person i still give them i still look at them sideways when i see them they're just mad because the only reason i have my job is because of nepotism (laughs) but yes mark i still use clear eyes because i have to um people judge me because my eyes get pink because i smoke i smoke and like my eyes get pink, pink. I'm Captain Obvious. Like my eyes tell no lies. <laughs> I'm not as think as you stone. <laughs> Do you know I really don't feel ripped until I get around someone like my mom. And then she'll look at me and she's like, really? And I'm like, oh, I feel stoned. <laughs> she shamed me. I feel stoned. <laughs> Moms have that magical superpower, though. You don't even need to be stoned, and you feel like that you are a fuck up. <laughs> do you know how I judge that I do my job well? Is that I still have it after all these years, and everyone at my job knows all my business. And they know stuff that probably I don't even know about me. And so they keep me around. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not stoned officer. I, I go only five miles an hour all the time. Well, oh. seriously, 
when the deer are out crossing the street during certain times of the year or when we have drunk bears sometimes no drunk bears are real not just like the cocaine bear from the georgia movie but in the autumn time there's fruit trees with rotting fruit that turns alcoholic and the black bears come down from the mountains and eat the fruit and are drunk walking down the street <laughs> oh that's awesome that's awesome are deer as dumb as they appear to be because here deer are so dumb we have to like make laws where people don't hit them because they're so dumb oh no ours are so smart they use the crosswalk <laughs> no, I'm not even joking. Like literally, they know how to use the crosswalk. <laughs> Maybe it's just the California deer. Too much sunshine. <laughs> right, they're so pampered and spoiled. They don't have to. They don't suffer, <laughs> except for when there's no water or not enough food. But you know, we don't see them as much because with all the developments, the greedy humans have pushed them out. Because mm. of all the development, we like we don't even see really like when I was a kid, it was not rare to see a lynx or a cougar or like a, a coyote, a fox. You don't see any of it anymore because they've all been pushed north, all of them. Yeah, and the fires have been pushing them out of the mountains, so we actually do. Well, I told you a couple of weeks ago we had a cougar, and then there was that joke a couple of years ago where there was a cougar on the university campus, and the kid was like. Oh, yeah, that was just my mom. Don't worry about her. <laughs> <laughs> we get drunk tears stacking around, obviously, and every <laughs> oblivious and everything. That's awesome. My mom asked if I offended the worker at my house, at my house, water on, on a hot day. I said, I almost. Offered, not I offended. Oh, <laughs> 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 you, you, okay, time to put your glasses All right. Putting my foot down. It's time to put your glasses on. My mom asked if I <laughs> offered the worker at my house water on a hot day. I said, I'm almost blank years old. At some point, you have to trust that you raised me right. Fair. Same. I, You know what? I give water to the mail um, carriers around here when it's over 100. I feel so bad for them. Yeah. Deer my area have gotten scary docile lately. They used to be scared of cars and people. Now they don't care. Yeah, glasses work. Uh, right. The deer eat out of blueberries. <laughs> eat our blueberries. No, we cover them up so they don't eat our blueberries. They've been pre-covered. And, oh, is it on the East Coast too? Because up here, they've been warned to not eat you have to check the deer here because some of them have tuberculosis. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it is. I didn't know deer could get tuberculosis, but it's true. One less thing I can't eat. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody, I don't recommend tuberculosis to anybody. No, I'm talking about deer. Deer actually isn't as bad as people think it is. No, it's yummy. <laughs> you need your glasses, Grandpa. So <laughs> I do. That is terrible, Mark. We have deer in Australia, but unfortunately, there are none around here. I have a full freezer. <laughs> Walking home. Be careful. Portland it literally is the mean streets of Portland. I'm kind of at a midlife crisis right now. I lost my pipe cleaners and my pipes clogged. Uh, I have to roll. Cotton bud, ear ear cleaner, cotton swab. Well, it's um, it's oh, this it's guy. Too I, long. Never mind. I, I have this super. I had to buy the specialty long pipe cleaner. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the extra long. And the and the funny thing is, like. When I got them, um, I had to get them from arts and craft um, retailer because they really don't sell them anymore. Right, because who smokes pipes except to do crafts <laughs> with? <laughs> Pipe cleaners are huge in the craft game, you know. Right. I got attacked by uh, by a baby deer once. The young, the young. Oh, by a bee, by a big deer. The young one was there. Oh, baby. Oh, wow. 
I had bison, bison once. I actually had um, bison in the package in the freezer forever, and I cooked it, and I it just tasted like meat to me. It was really good, though. Of course, Liz. Our deer have all kinds of random diseases. This is what I think of. So, so many of the government will test the ones you hunt for free if they're safe. See, this is what I think. I, maybe I watch too much YouTube, but exactly what Kilroy is saying, why I won't eat deer. Deer, bear, bison, elk had them all <laughs> not long ago. You know, I've had um, alligator, Rocky Mountain oysters, all kinds of crazy stuff. Zip tie, zip tie for the pipe. Ooh, that's not a bad idea. That's the one thing Ben Shapiro said that's true. And he was like, you don't have thousands of zip ties in your house? I do. Everybody does. But it's true. I have thousands of zip ties in my house. After the, um, January 6th, um, he was trying to defend the zip tie guy who got massive prison time. And he was saying, like, everyone has zip ties. But it's kind of true. I have thousands of zip ties in my house. And you had goat and didn't bring me home any? <laughs> goat? Bomb! It is good. <laughs> I do like it. A length of wire will fix it. I, I, you know what? I have actually a bale on the other. Not a bale, but I have a huge thing of wire. Oh, that's bomb. You know, the property next door to my um, job, they give us goat all the time. It's good. It is. No, it's not like goat milk. I wouldn't. I'll, actually, I like goat milk, so I wouldn't call it that repugnant either. But no, it, I mean, it's a little bit more gamey flavored. But it's, if you like bean meat, you don't like alligator no, too tough. Fair. That is true. Like, if something's chewy, like, I, um, my Western brain won't like it. I won't say where I, oh, well, no, I can't see that on the stream. That's just gross. I may or may not know someone who's had monkey meat on a stick, though. Well, at least it wasn't monkey brains through the table. It was it. It was seasoned well, and it tasted like beef. <laughs> I thought it all tasted like chicken. <laughs> yes, we have to leave the zip ties at home when we go to the cabin. I agree with you, Water. No, he was just basically like he was defending the in no way, shape, or form am I defending this shrub. But what he said was true. But I work in the construction field, so I have all kinds of of, of like a long time ago when I lived up north with my ex-wife. Um I in my truck I had all kinds of ropes and stuff. And like on the radio, I had ropes. We had just moved. Okay, so on the radio, I heard they were looking for these kids um, that were kidnapped. I got pulled over. I jokingly told the cop, oh, there's no white kids in my car. He pulls his gun out and he's like, get out of the car. <laughs> so he puts me in the back of his car and I'm laughing. He gets and opens up the trunk. He gets on the radio and I'm like, oh, F. I said it out loud. It took him half an hour for me to convince those guys that I just moved from Southern California and I didn't kidnap anybody and I'm just an idiot and I'm sarcastic and I have terrible humor. And they, they found the kids wandering around. They found them. <laughs> I on, uh, Will you read that? I took my glasses off. Yeah. I broke yes. the time, so I pulled out my other one. <laughs> I am honestly over all the ex exotic meats. I'm fine with the regular ones that you get in the grocery store. Fear. Dev, Dev prefers lamb, LOL, and squid, octopus, or calamari. Nope, like rubber. I kind of like ball. the deep fried little baby ones, but they're so smart. I feel weird eating them. Calamari oh, is so good. I'm craving it. I know. We did have cuttlefish chips. They were freaking amazing. But there's a corner store that imports a lot of, has a lot of Indian imports. So, yes, if squid is like rubber, it's overcooked. If it's cooked really, if it's cooked right, it's really tender. Exactly. It's all about don't overcook <sighs> your meat. I went through this weird calamari phase. I was obsessed with calamari. Yep, Mark would almost have to be raw. 
Yes. It right. It's like um scale ups. You just put it on real quick and it's done. Don't over fluff and muss some of your seafoods. Oh or man, when I, lived, when I lived in Arizona, I pretended to be rich. We used to eat at fancy restaurants all the time. I miss scallops. <laughs> Me too. Yep, squid cooks in about 30 seconds. I want to go to the coast and eat real... F oh, I want to go up to Bandon. Oh, I want to go to the beach. <laughs> I know this whole talk is making me want to go to the beach. Um, I'm obsessed with sourdough. Um, the sourdough bowls with the clam chowder. I'm obsessed oh, with red clam chowder. I would need like three humans three or four adult side humans to share one with me because I can't do that many calories, but I would like one. Ah, oh, Bandon is good. I, so last time I went to San Francisco, I had one and I was like, you know what? This was worth the traffic. This is worth like <laughs> it worth parking. the 12 hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is so oh oh it's so good. You guys almost Made me have a heart attack. I thought I lost my taco seasoning recipe I've been working on for the past few months. I recently, I put taco seasoning on stuff today. Chowder bowls are the best. That's one thing, like, um, you know, I'm so West Coast. I thought it was a California thing until I went to the East Coast. And they're like, we invented this dummy. <laughs> oh, that's going to make me think about lobster rolls and crab cakes. Oh, damn it. Why so do we always do to food and drugs? <laughs> life, because that's life. That is, life is nothing but food. It's what makes life worth living is food and drugs. <laughs> a long time ago, I dated a young lady. We were both in our 20s. She was from she was from Maine. And I didn't know how far Maine was until I met her parents and they showed up with lobster because they were crab fisher, like real life crab fishermen. And her, I remember her dad telling me, they We were in Santa Monica. Lobster and not crab? What's wrong with bull, that? Bull. They showed up with bull. But I remember him telling me, He's like, I'm eating crab cakes. He's like, Those are like worth like three or four hundred dollars. That's real Maine crab. Like, but it was the greatest thing I'd ever had, ever. And he literally yes. brought it on a plane. <laughs> from... In the little cooler with dry ice. <laughs> yes, oh, they were... So... I, the one thing I love about non-city people is they're so real. They showed up with hats and like, you know, they dressed like they were from Maine. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was like, <laughs> oh, so adorable. I love real people. Californians are wearing designer clothes. Like, they're yeah. not real people. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's all right, Kilroy. I realize seafood is not for everybody, and some people love it, and some people hate it. I am on Team Oysters, though. Oh, now I want oyster shooters. Damn it. <laughs> you know, and, um, I, I'm a really picky person, but I didn't know any better. I grew up eating fish, and so now I'm obsessed with fish. Like, I just didn't know any better as a kid. <laughs> I've never seen a squid that tough and cooked. If it's cooked it's, right, and I've eaten a lot of squid, I'll eat it if it's t if it's cooked wrong. I'm obsessed with with squid. I'm <laughs> just, I'm, I'm tough, tender. Just bring it on. Just bring on the squid. Put it, put it in soup. Throw it on my face. <laughs> I don't care. I, I, I think know. I draw a line at tripe. Let's go there. Tripe. I don't think I can do it. Okay, because um, I grew up um, with Hispanic people. I'm obsessed with tripas. See, I think um, I could do lingua, but I don't think I could do tripas. Have you ever had menudo? No, because that's a band from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's funny? I ate it almost every weekend until I was like 14. Someone told me what was in it and I stopped eating it. That was probably the saddest day ever. My my pop swore by it. he thought it was medicinal. Like, it but probably it's is. Just... maybe you need some more. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to get my glasses. <laughs> no. Okay, here's my dilemma. I'm gonna just, I want to tell you what my dilemma is. Because I want to look cool and wear my glasses at the same time. So I got these, okay? But without my goatee, I look like a space cadet wearing these. All right, let's try these out. Well, at least they're not like the giant cataract glasses. Those would, 
actually you maybe that would be more funny <laughs> just i am like full um well i'm more ray charles because ray charles didn't have a beard <laughs> <gasps> you you can get your jeans and patch them yourself you farce hole <laughs> go fussy cut those pieces <laughs> If, if you've eaten those seafood sticks. Are you talking about fish sticks? I'm obsessed with those. I, right. Oh, really? I, I think I have some in my freezer no, but right tripe now. tripe is the fish. I'm thinking of tripe. Is it not tripe that's cow intestines? I thought that was yes. called tripe Tripe is, is intestines. Yeah, tripe is intestines. Okay. Because now I'm confused. Is, did they put beef intestines into seafood sticks now i'm confused <laughs> well there's there's both right because i thought tripe was a fish also <laughs> you're gonna have to sing america the beautiful or georgia on my mind <laughs> america america you can unplug the fan unplug the fan yeah you can take that one I totally was wolfing about sewing, so you can. Oh, um, man. oh, look at that crochet that had rest covered. They're trying to get water, and he wants you to look at it. So, Dove, you're. Oh! <laughs> See if I gave <laughs> Right, that's what I thought. Tripe is cow stomach, right? Yeah, and they put it in manu though. Right, and I'm scared to. That's I. I'm scared of that. <laughs> I was I for a it, long time. I started I, eating it again, like in my 30s. But I, um, I'm allergic to everything. So there was something in it that people um, utter that made that I'm allergic to. Oh, for the jeans patch. Oh. <laughs> Here, bring Jeez. out your pants. <laughs> no, bring out old. your pants. Oh, Those are old uh, old jeans. That thing is like four or five years old, too. I can't believe it took me that long to make it useful. Okay. okay. Here, bring out the ones that I've done a long time ago. Right. It's crazy that I can actually see and look cool at the same time with my gaudy glasses on. It, right, imagine that. <laughs> I'm scaring these the are more for. I have these for driving because, um, it, believe it or not, it's really sunny here in uh, Southern California. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So. I can't move my camera far enough on my computer, but Loki's sitting next to me on Brunhilde's Aww. blanket. Aww. And yeah, he's just chilling out here. And David, Dove is bringing out one of my first patching masterpieces. Oh my God, I cannot believe this shit I did on those pair of pants. I know I need to go get those coveralls. Those are like I made overalls into a piece of artwork. I spent months and months working on each patch. Oh, he didn't even get the right bag. He's got pieces he needs to fussy cut because there's this pair of shorts that <clears throat> is basically being held together by the threads. <laughs> That's oh, I like pants he's grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, oh. No, I realized finally. No. Hey, oh, those are awesome. Oh, hey, hey, how's it going? Oh, he scared a cat. So, where's the my fine? Oh, those are artwork. Let me make you. They better. are. Here's a patch that I hand wove the embroidery threads in, and. I'm going to go get my cover on. <laughs> Fancy sewed little pieces and patches. We have some classic denim on denim. We have some weaving and, oh, flannel. That This flannel has been around for a long time. It went into pants for my sister, all sorts of stuff. 
and yep, lots of stitching because these pants need lots of help and there's still giant holes, but I'm trying to get this one to actually wait. You're I was trying to get in the new one. You are oh stand behind me. The <laughs> and stuff. there's the newly patched pants. This is no, a very not. awkward oh, angle. Wait a minute. There it is. <laughs> yes. Right there. We have cowboys. Cowboys and boots and legs in my face. <laughs> Take these away. Take them away. Thank you. I know the wafter the weave. <laughs> it's cute kitty. Yes, the the kitty is the prize of the show. The humans were just <laughs> accessories and not that we pretty. We work here. <laughs> Seriously, I, uh, I just make money for cat food. <laughs> I spent a while working on these, but I covered these. These ones are Instagram famous. I made yes. these three or four years ago. That's the back. And then each of these pouches I made um, completely by hand. Cute. I went off on these. I, I wear these, but these are like artwork. And I, I would be so mad if I got if I destroyed these. <laughs> No, that's where you just put more patches on it. <laughs> I love these things. These were my... I used to wear these every day, but then I put a bunch of holes on one side um, when I was welding one time when I was too lazy to put proper clothes on. Um, no, these ones actually are lined in flannel, so you didn't oh, see the awesome. dupes hanging out. <laughs> it was... <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I I was obsessed with San Cisco slow stitching for the longest time. I need to get back into it. Instead, I um I fight strangers on the internet. <laughs> I, I need to get back to San Cisco patches. Yep, no, I didn't show his under drawers. Those are the shorts that he's working on. I oh, I sh I need him to send it to me. I have a buttonhole stitch video I made for him that is kind of inappropriate. It's like the inappropriate sewing video <laughs> where I'm like, you stab, you put it through the noose, you stab it again and pull through the noose. But that's kind of the buttonhole stitch. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Like I said earlier, like if it works, if you if you describe it and it works, it works. <laughs> Gotta, I, I call things the, to upload it. the the whirly gig, the whatchamabob, the who's it, you know, like that thing over there. <laughs> these oh, are massive I... screws. Do you these screws are um older <laughs> than so you and I can watch? I know, and they're so big, such big screws. Thank you. Oh, those pants. Or for <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <I'm... laughs> no, the, there's shorts that really he could you could see the dupas through that he needs to work on because I refuse to patch them this time. <laughs> That's all right. They were super funny. Water name. <laughs> my middle name is typo as well, and thingamajig is my favorite word and shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly at a loss for words. Like, you know what's so funny? When I was younger, um, I used to always make fun of my mom because she would do the same thing. And I'd be like, do you have aphasia? What is wrong with you? And look at me. Look at me. I am the same age that she was. I'm the same age that she was when she started losing it. <laughs> no, but you know the word aphasia is where I got caught up. I was like, wait, where did you go to school to know that word? <laughs> I've known um, a lot of people with head injuries and word salad. And then they start like you know it's the it's the most cruel thing when your brain betrays you. It is. And you're trying and you're trying to speak and your brain is just not like it's it's awful. It yeah. I've grown. I've I was raised around senior citizens. <laughs> <laughs> oh here. 
I've been looking at these house coats, house coats, but I haven't shown off this one that I hand stitched. Awesome. This is weird trim, horrible synthetic silk, very oh, nice silk, awesome. and it awesome. is like T length for a reference. And I'm tiny, <laughs> so it's not that big. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you know, it's so funny you would say that. I didn't, like, realize my height until um, my mom was like, I really like that flower coat. I was like, you can have it. She put it on and it was dragging. And she's like, you can have it back. <laughs> Will you hem this for me and then hand it yeah. back to me, please? <laughs> I shortened will. the arms by six inches. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly what it is too because she puts it on she looks like uh, Mickey Mouse in the Sorcerer's Apprentice <laughs> yes oh, oh no that's now I just that's the Fantasia skin, but yes yeah. fun fact I saw the original Fantasia I still have the vinyl of the original Fantasia but in the year 2000 well 1999 when Fantasia 2000 came out a friend of mine worked at the movie theater, so I saw that movie on Mushrooms. So I will never forget Fantasia <laughs> 2000 for as long as I live. <laughs> Kilroy, um, you're probably the perfect height. I uh, no, like, I, I have... it would be too short. It would be too tiny. Oh, he would, Kilroy about your would coat. need to add three inches. My coat. Oh, thank you. But Godless's coat would. I think they would all be too short for you, honey dear. <laughs> My mom is five. She says she's five six. She's like five four, five three. <laughs> she's yeah. like this tall. She's like right here. <laughs> oh, she's shorter than that then. So put yeah, a giant short. cup in it with a big button to make it cute and just make it a little shorter. It's easy That's to true. make stuff littler. It's hard to make stuff bigger. <laughs> I've made, I've actually, like I said, like, I've made clothes for her. So I know her dimensions. Like I've, I've made a ton of clothes for her. That's why like recently I made this day of the dead sweater. She wears all the time and the patch came off. I took that thing. She calls me. She's like, I think I lost the sweater. I said, no, you didn't. I took, <laughs> I took it. I, I got I'm, I'm it. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you know, especially if I make it, I don't want her walking around looking junky because people always ask her, where did you get that? And she loves right? saying, my son made it, you know? You don't want her to look like a slob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no way. Not in this house. I have a fancy box set of both of those. I saw pie on mushrooms. That's I'm five feet. <laughs> I do the same. Water Nate, I completely get it because... I'm five and three quarters, so I lie when I say I'm five one. <laughs> I completely get it. You know what, though? I had a friend who lived in your area. She said she was 4'11", but she didn't seem that short to me. No, we make up with, with giant personalities. I think she wore high heels, too. <laughs> but, that helps also. <laughs> but but I remember like when I drove up there and like I hadn't seen her in forever and I remember giving her a hug and I'm like you're not that short because when I picture 411 I picture like you know like down here somewhere it seemed maybe I'm not as tall as I think I am she just didn't no. seem as uh... <laughs> both of the Fantasia movies they came out with VHS and lithographs and whatnot. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Hold on. Let me I, got I saw a nine-year-old kid today that got a sewing machine, made a shirt, EDH kid, and relaxes and relaxing sewing. He loves it. Sewing is therapy. It handy. I mean, I sew, I knit, I crochet, I do... I do a lot of handicraft things and it's really good for my well-being. <laughs> I used to um I'm a late night person and like in my drinking days I would go to the bar. I would be that guy that would go to the after bar 
and I love selling. I absolutely love it, especially for an insomniac. It's the perfect thing to do. It is, and I hate people, so it's nice because I don't have to see anybody. <laughs> it's a one one person sport. I have that's it the is. one thing. That's why in my bloopers, when I lost it and went blurry eyed, I was telling the truth. Buy a sewing machine. You won't have time to judge people. <laughs> no, you'll be fighting. Your yeah. robin will like vomit itself out. <laughs> and then yeah. you'll have to. Oh, that was the best time to have Brunhild have a meltdown yesterday. I was like, everybody I could have wanted to help me was on the stream. I'm like, somebody's going to help me if I can't do this myself. <laughs> You actually had experts with you. That's actually I something did. I actually know how to fix. I That's know. awesome, Alibaba. That's so awesome. Like, I love it when um, the younger generation learns how to sew and they actually are into it. Isaiah oh, had a sewing machine. Max? I have to look that up. I need new stuff to watch. I, I'm Again, I'm taking all recommendations. I am in a real show hole right now. I don't know if they're on YouTube. They're mostly on instagram and tiktok maybe but this little kid is oh he sews such cute things and is so enthusiastic about it and it's just awesome that's what we haven't talked about yet the met gala and the this year's theme was carl lagerfeld really I yeah, haven't um, I looked last year. Last year traumatized me. And so. Yeah, can uh, you trying to fit her big butt into Marilyn Monroe's dress and ruining it? <laughs> and like, I had no idea who Doja Cat was. I've never heard one of her songs, but I like her only because she goes to fashion shows that I would actually wear the clothes. <laughs> Fair. So, her, so, cause the new, like, I hear um, New Age rap and I'm like, these people are famous. Is this considered music? I'm old. Like I feel like I feel like old man complaining, but it's her fashion. Sense, <laughs> I, if you're not playing an instrument or making, if I can't understand what you're saying, it's scary to me. I'm old. I, I agree with you, Water Nate. Like, imagine if I like put on Abraham Lincoln's jacket or something or like George like no no don't do that or like yeah, I don't know maybe I'm just a purist and I'm old and I'm old school like that like you know, I have a lot of Ripley's owns her that dress now though so I, it was the curi Ripley's is not a it's a different kind of a museum, so I think they have different standards for their collection, and I think they made a wrong choice. And keep in mind, Ripley's, like, they buy mummies. They buy, like, shrunken heads. Like, <laughs> Ripley's yeah. is... The one in Hollywood is lit. If you're ever... That's the one tourist trap I, place I, I would say go. The one on Hollywood Boulevard is... They got some scary stuff in there. <laughs> It was wrong. It was wrong. But again, that goes back to like, like I don't know if it's cultural appropriation, but what would you call that? Like, it, like, like I, I don't know. It's not cultural appropriation, but it's on that line like historical of historical like, appropriation, historical yeah. abuse. <laughs> again, I'm not going to put on George Washington's wig. <laughs> no, Just or those deer carved teeth. Hell no. <laughs> oh. oh. The things people do to themselves, I'll replicate it. I, matter of fact, like I kind of want to wear one of those suits, but I'm just anti-tight pants. But I totally would make one of those outfits. <laughs> right, but you would make it so it fits you. Right, that's why I don't... I think that's why... Oh, what's the words? I don't love the cosplay scene because I just want to be a characters of myself. I don't need to be characters of like my dolls. Uh, I this might get me canceled because uh, there's someone that I follow that I think they follow me that is a cosplayer is really into it. It's not necessarily my thing. I admire at their sewing skills. Yep. I 
I've stolen ideas from cosplayers as far as leather work because they do amazing because they'll make uniforms out of strips of leather. And I'm like, how did you do that? You know? Yeah. But it's just not my thing. And I'm really into, I was really into comic books as a kid, but it's still not my thing. Be careful, Liz, even charging your phone. <laughs> See, here's the problem. I... I have a lot of my dad's old clothes, okay? I want to wear them so bad, especially his old biker stuff. My dad was skinnier than me. I'm not going to put it on and or put on his old pants and stretch them. No, they don't fit. They do not. Slim up, fatty. <laughs> he was a stick. He was like Tom Petty skinny. My dad was skinny, skinny. No Gordo in your house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I I um I take more after the uh my mom's side. <laughs> <laughs> I know people in the Canadian and American conservative oh gosh, where are my glasses? Conservators Association. They hated what happened to the Maryland dress. Yeah, I heard there was so many uh, dress historians, the outcry, oh my god, there was so people made bank on that. <laughs> I can't remember her name. There was a woman I used to watch. I don't know why I unsubscribed. She's in Germany, and she's kind of, like, crazy. But she did this review of Marilyn Monroe's dress, and it had me on the floor. Because she's against um, um, visible stitches. So she'll go, and she zooms in on, like, million-dollar dresses. And she's like, how did you pay $120,000 for a dress I could have made in my garage? Like, she oh, goes off. Is, is that the seamstress who does the reviews? Think, she's yes. Brazilian who lives in Germany now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I love her. I know. I have her. not sent her any pom-poms for her 100000 pom-pom dress. I'm so sad. I'm like, she's I crazy. don't I, she is. I love her. I need to resubscribe. I don't know why I, uh, I, I purge my YouTube um, every six months because all the pretentiousness drives me crazy. So I purge like a lot of stuff. But I need to resubscribe to her. Yeah, she's cute. And oh, she just did an oh, was it a Lagerfeld inspired dress? I think so. That had was white with black <laughs> details and spiders on it. Super cute. See, and she did a Met Gala thing again. Her Met Gala thing yep. last year was off the charts. It was so hilarious. Her and Met I Gala know, and thing. Her handbags are so, that duck bag is <laughs> adorable. Oh my god, I want a duck I, bag, rubber ducky bag now. <laughs> I love Seamstra. I, you know, um, I get, I'm resubscribed to her, so I'll be watching all all the stuff I missed. I'm telling you, I need new stuff to watch because I do. I'm in a show hole. Ever since Picard ended, I don't know what to watch. <laughs> I'm I'm in this sad. I'm rewatching Enterprise for the seventy fifth time, and I have Enterprise on um, DVD, Blu-ray, and I need professional help. I admire the skill and creative process of cosplay, even if I don't care to wear a particular costume. True. I think a lot of it, too, is, like, for someone like me, I would only be able to cosplay, like, the Green Lantern, Ben Sisko, um, like, certain characters, like, so, I and, I, and I know there's the argument of people of color cosplay all kinds of things, but, like, it just was never my thing. And I'm not a Stormtrooper fan. Yeah, that was Carl Lagerfeld. <laughs> No, people walk around with these giants. Like, I, I could not walk around with a mask on all day. I would get claustrophobic. I would have a panic attack inside of my mask. I would be like, I, you'd see me running and ripping my mask off. <laughs> I was obsessed with The Expanse. I was obsessed with The Expanse. But I only watched it up to the second season, I think. I could see you do a good Ben Cisco. I'm obsessed with Ben Cisco, so I will cosplay him one day. I will. Because I already have the haircut. What's color and makeup? <laughs> Eddie Eddie Murphy did do uh, whiteface before uh it was popular. 
I and pretend it did. It all the time. That is true. <laughs> but <laughs> I pretended to be somebody else for way too much of my life. Cosplay doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> I'm not trouncing. It's just not my thing. I'm obsessed with D Space Nine. I, I still watch it. Um. I um, it's just not my thing. And again, when I lived in Oregon, I got introduced to the world of conventions and cosplaying. It's amazing to go watch. It's amazing to go see these intricate costumes because I'm a sewist. So I, I have that that Taylor's eye like, wow, like you really put that together and I can't see your stitches like you're amazing. I don't know if I could wear a. Um, a 90 pound costume or like. Even today, I was watching this documentary about in Louisiana. There's a uh, um, there's African American men that dress up. They wear native headdress, and they've been doing it since the 50s, 60s. Man, these costumes get so intricate. I don't know if I have the neck power to hold up this giant freaking headdress. I was sitting there. I was like googling, like how much can the human head take? How much stress can like? Because I could make one easily. Some of those cosplayers put on latex skin makeup and wear that all day. I I got claustrophobic just thinking about that. I would rip that off of my face. Could you wear a mask for more than 10 hours? Like something completely covering your face? With no ventilation? <clears throat> Probably, but only because when I was in the dissection lab, we were the industrial mm -hmm. and 95 filters and wearing that for three hours at a stretch. Like I, I could do it, but I would rather just make myself my most awesome and not pretend it. I like to play characters, but my version of a character, like, yeah, that's why I like, I like bringing up Ben Cisco because all I would have to do is make a Starfleet coat. You know what I'm saying? Like a, like a top jacket, black pants, you're done. You know, you can tuck your. That shit right now. <laughs> I would do. You need good foundation and skincare. <laughs> I think I'm too jumpy for all of that, like um, makeup stuff. I think I'm just too much of a jumpy. Like I can't. I I said this, and I know it's funny, but I have sensitive eyes. That's why I don't wear contacts because I would be doing this all day, all day. No, eye makeup is not the same thing, and even when I put on my big stage makeup it's more it's not the same <laughs> i'm i'm too jumpy for all that and like because um i wanted a darth vader mask so i went and got one a real one i gave it to marquette and he has a real darth vader mask so if you see, ever <laughs> see a guy in a at a Raider game, I gave it to him. But now I have a half one. <laughs> because I can breathe in that one. I couldn't wear a full... Uh, maybe it's me. I already have breathing issues, so claustrophobia is just like... Um, I feel like uh, like I would be like a drowning rat or something. <laughs> when, you wear, when you wear contacts, you develop a habit of not smashing your eyeball. <laughs> I um when in uh, my Hollywood days 20 something years ago when I was trying to be cool I bought white out um contacts gosh I'm so old they were so popular in Hollywood I don't know about anywhere else but every other person you'd look at them and their whole eyeball was white and um I almost hurt myself going like this so much so I traumatized myself with my Hollywood contacts. A lot of makeup is getting is getting the right stuff off your skin too. I don't feel makeup. I don't feel makeup at all if my skin jives with it. I, I concur. I, I could never I wear makeup. Oh, it's so it depends. Like liquid foundation, fuck that shit. Powder foundation on a nice base. It just eat. Oh, I, I love doing my face like a clown. <laughs> People have tried. People have tried. I will still think the guy. Um, is this store called Sephora? Yeah. 
um, I need someone that used to buy really overpriced makeup. And I would always go in there with her. And this one dude gave me some advice and he saved my skin. And my skin, I looked younger because of his advice. So it worked. So some of that stuff is uh, some of that stuff is good advice. But you know what? Everyone's different, though. You know, yep. don't take any medical advice from sewing. I'm a jumping, jumpy, spazzy kind of person. I'm a spaz. I can't like have anything on my face. I'm a bad cosplayer. I just like to play make believe and pretend. <laughs> And I just slap shit on my face because it's I it's fun to me. I do like, but I consider like um, oh white out contacts. I remember those crazy. It was a weird phase. It was a weird phase. I've watched too many movies in my day. You know that's why when I look at these kids now, I try not to judge them too hard because I followed a bunch of really crappy fads. I dyed my hair blonde i had my hair tennis ball green i had blue hair like marge simpson blue i judged no one well there's i but is it there's a difference between playing pretend and dress up in a character and then what young folks are being indoctrinated with and it's not the same like we're not giving them freedom to play and we're like, I and you believe this, we're going to force you down this path when you should just play. I look like Dennis Rodman's um, lost cousin. <laughs> Much shorter. I did. I did. I did. I, I um, in high school, I'd wear, I had Jenkos. It was a thing. I had Jenkos, my hoodie. And um, every week I would dye my hair until um, I found burgundy. And then I had red hair for almost two years. I was obsessed with Bergen. I, I had red hair for a long time. And then it turned orange. And my dad, he's, he was such a good father. He's like, look, bro, your face is come and gone. Your hair, you have dead ends. Your hair's ugly. Cut it. <laughs> he spoke to me man to man. He's like, it, it did look good. Now it's unkept. <laughs> I want some colored contacts that just make my eyes a teensy bit lighter. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, they're dark, so you can't see what my iris is very, very well. I'm not, I'm not strong lit. Uh, same, my eyes are black. I said this yesterday. Like people, I've been called a demon. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot see my pupils at all. I like it though. Like um, when I look at people and I open my eyes, and they're like, "Oh crud, you really can't see your pupils." <laughs> Context, though, like, see, that's the difference between, like, contexts that are actually, like, made for you in a laboratory by your doctor are different than ones you buy on Hollywood Boulevard with some guy that says, all right, look, you got to take care of these. There you go. 20 bucks. There you go. That was, oh, those were the days. I thought I was so cool smoking my, my camel non-filters. I thought I was so cool. I was just a geek ch chasing cancer. I used to have hair past my shoulders. Now I shave it. I, you know, what's so funny. Um, yesterday, Isaiah looked at me and he's like, when did you start balding? I told him the truth. I said, 17. His, he said, what? I said, look, I'm sorry, man. I'm just telling you the truth. I started balding at 17 years old. The, right here. And then it just slowly started. <laughs> and now I'm in my 40s and I, um, I'm i sadly, I have the fryer tuck. I wear contacts anyways, but prescription colored lenses are costly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything special, like anything. I, um, I'm actually looking into getting um, new glasses, but I kind of want transitions. And then I saw the price for transitions. I was like, no, I'll just wear my geeky glasses over them. No, thank you. <laughs> And that's with, um, and that's with, um, what's it called? Insurance. Insurance. I smoked camel <laughs> non for 10 years, Kilroy, for 10 years. So if there is ever a giant hole in my lungs, I would know where it came from. And you know, what's funny. I would smoke them and I would feel it right here. I would feel like smoking that cigarette. Camel nons are no joke. 
I feel like Humphrey Bogart smoking Camel Non. Camel Nons were Humphrey Bogart was a hero of mine. I love Humphrey Bogart. Camel Nons are amazing. Do not take any medical advice from Godless Sewing ever. <laughs> Do you know what's so sad? Um, still to this day, I, I I honestly have not picked up nicotine in six years. Um, I have dreams that I'm that I'm smoking a cigarette. I still and, and I mean I'm years into it and I still have dreams that I'm like, oh. But the truth is, um, I quit smoking because I could barely breathe. Um, addiction, water nay, addiction. Be trying to be cool. And then I got hooked, and every person who introduced me to um, cigarettes quit by the time before they were 18. And by the time I was 18, I was like a pack-a-day smoker. But I will say, like, when I, um, I stopped playing football, and that was the, down, the downfall. Once I stopped playing sports, I started smoking like a chimney. And that, like, I didn't stop until I was in my 30s. I had hair to my waist back when I was was twenty, but but it kept falling in containers off oil. Oh, of you oil. can't reach with your freaking glasses of old I oil really working on engine, so I cut it. <laughs> that is so strange to me. I really can't read without my glasses. Six years ago, six years no smoking versus ten years smoking. I think I was. I, I think 10 years outweighs six. <laughs> oh. Shut up. Don't say that. You're too stoned and too blind to read now. It's because I pregame heavy before I get on. And, like, they, um, They've been having sales on the shake, so I end up buying more, and I smoke these giant finger-sized doobies. I need professional help. Like, I'm buying king papers and putting two of them together. It's overcompensation, though, if you really think about it, because I would compulsively smoke cigarettes, and I smoke J's like that. No medical advice on... <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I've been waiting for that burp for a minute. Okay, I feel better. You ever feel that? Like, it was slowly coming up. <laughs> Do we scare you? You you looking for fortitude to start the stream? <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I have um, Shalimar stuck in my head. Because I was editing today. And I have a bunch of old music videos in my... Um, saved in in my giant file. So I watch them while I'm editing. So I have a bunch of 1970s dance videos stuck in my head. I am obsessed with Shalimar. I am obsessed with dynasty, like that whole era slave for anyone who knows. Um, the guy who sang the Ghostbusters song actually was a real musician. And Ray Parker Jr. was in a band called Slave. And they have, I think, like 20 or 30 gold records. You should check them out. <laughs> the man literally invented a playing style. Back when people... <laughs> huh? You need to start using computer paper with how big you're rowing. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. They sell these... Very like, good, though. It would be gross. <laughs> They sell um, those giant papers at the at um, at my at my smoke shop. But part of me is like, have is this what I've become? A am I like such a wreck that I need like a an um, eighth size joint? Like, am I that much of a mess? That's just overkill to me, you know. Says the guy who probably smokes half of that in a J. Like, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> My boss wants to smoke blunts these days and it's killing my lungs. I had to stop smoking blunts for that very reason. That's why I started smoking papers. I miss smoking blunts too. I had to cut um, tobacco out of my life. I had to because it was like literally killing me. Liz knows. Liz knows how crazy I am for smoking in the first place. I have asthma too, so definitely don't smoke that much. <laughs> Liz knows my real health problems. Surprised you. 
haven't called the Lung and Heart Association yet. I hate when I burp, when a burp won't come out. That feeling reminds me of when I had a heart attack. Do you know, because of my breathing issues, I, um, I worry about that sometimes. That's why, um, the kid and I take CPR classes every year for the ignorant. What's the difference between a blunt and a paper? I, I'm going to run real quick. One's tobacco and one's actual paper. true because technically like a blunt is usually a cigar that you empty out the tobacco and use the tobacco leaf i smoked a pack of the huge philly cigars a day i was on on those things oh my god that's crazy Oh, Phillies. I do miss old-fashioned cigar boxes, though. <laughs> I know that's a weird thing to like. Hmm. But they were always so pretty. You're welcome for the degenerate educational classes. <laughs> which is, but that is different from a spleef, which is tobacco rolled in with your joint <laughs> lots of coughing yeah blunt that's just sounds like bad news i got to a cigar shop just for empty boxes i use them for wrapping gifts <gasps> so cute i collected a bunch of cigar boxes with the intention of making a banjo and now i just have a bunch of cigar boxes <laughs> well, you should start start cigar box juggling. Oh, um, I was really thinking about making a um, banjo. I have the strings and everything. Now all I have to do is literally just put it together. <laughs> it's on that giant list of things where I was like, oh, I watched it on YouTube, and I'm like, I can do that. I have all of that. <laughs> I started at 3.30 in the morning and I wake up the next day and I'm like, I don't know what the hell was wrong with me last night. <laughs> what did I start? <laughs> the worst. I'm so glad I didn't order that quilting machine. The worst is that like four in the morning. I'm like, no, it's not. It's the knitting machine. I'm like, you know, I'm, I, I'm not a knitter, but I want to be a knitter. I'm so glad I have not ordered that yet. Cause I'm not a knitter. <laughs> It's a t being a knitter and using a knitting machine is not the same skill. Yes, yes. I've learned that. Or like loom. Like I was thinking about buying a loom. But I'm like, I'm don't, not that bored. <laughs> you don't have that much room in your house, depending on the size of the loom. Some of them like literally take an entire room. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See, Alibaba gets it. I'm going to, I'm going to loss some out of sewing machines, feet, and attachments. Did I read that wrong? No, I I think their autocorrect is not our friend tonight. No, it's not. It's not mine at all. <laughs> Knitting machines are neat. See, Alibaba gets it. I'm sitting there. I'm like. And the, the funny thing is, I um, have yarn all over the place because I don't know why I buy this stuff. I use it for other projects and stuff, but I buy yarn because I'm, I'm a sewing geek. <laughs> I need, see, I don't need one. I was about to say, oh, I need one. No, I don't. I'm an Amazon junkie, too. I'm going to pad out some cigar boxes for feet. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I have a bunch of them. But they're so beautiful. A part of me doesn't want to take some of the boxes apart. He took like two hits off that pipe, and now he's going off the rails. Yeah, it's top shelf stuff. That reminds me. 
right and it's been four and a half hours yeah <laughs> I bought five sets of feet and attachments all sorted into boxes the seller dumped all the attachments into bubble into a bubble wrap envelope and put the empty boxes besides them oh my goodness oh i love going through I, that stuff i know i seen as if two ruffler feet aren't enough but I've seen ones that have more dials and fanciness, and now I want a super fancy ruffler foot since one of mine is in the shop. I mean, in the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. It's got this. <laughs> and the shop owner, like, I've made friends with the um, dispensary owner. I think he, like, he's from Russia, and a lot of Russian people, they're they're kind of, like, sketchy, like, they're like, oh, are Americans going to be nice? You you literally own a dispensary. I'm going to be real nice to you. Like, I don't care where you're from. I don't care who you are, what you do. Like, And so um, he tells me all the time, he's like, you are so nice to me. And he tells me some people are rude to him. He I has believe it. Well, for the past, well, <laughs> since the Cold War, Russia and the USSR has been demonized. You have eight different low shank rufflers. Alibaba, I want to live at your house. <laughs> <laughs> but it's too cold. But you have so many fun toys. My whole point of bringing it up is that he gives me top shelf stuff all the time. He's like, oh, no one's buying this. Take it. And it's like the designer stuff that no one buys because no one can afford it. Right. So he gives it to me. And so he gave me a bag today. And I'm like, oh, that's why they call this stuff top shelf. I forgot about it. Like, Holy cow. It works, <laughs> but we were we were commiserating over how the Kings lost, and he's a hardcore hockey fan, and it, and I really think it trips him out that like I walk in there and I talk hockey with him, and he it trips him out that I know a gang of stuff about hockey and certain teams' records and stuff. Do you know one time when I get my stuff together, I'm gonna get my other camera and I'm gonna pull out. Every attachment I have, and I want you to tell me what I have, Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> that will be a stream worth you like... watching and time stamping. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to do that because I, I need to clear out this cabinet. And this rollaway is all sewing attachments. There are things where I'm like, I'm a terrible sewist because I have no idea what this is. I know it goes on a sewing machine, but I don't know its function. <laughs> I have a couple of those, but I think my problem is I don't know how to make them work on my sewing machine. Mm -hmm. Same. There's certain things I don't want to destroy either. I've destroyed right. certain things just thinking I know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Why is my signal bad? I think I'm going to have to call and go full, Karen. You're going to have to upgrade to Starlink. <laughs> I love old cigar boxes, too, Liz. <laughs> God, the video will be 17 hours long. That's so... Yes. <laughs> We're going to have to pay for the upgraded StreamYard version for the 10 plus... Hour. We're going to do a 10-hour stream and then have to cut it and then do another 10-hour stream. <laughs> do you know... Streamyard used to let you go, but there's someone I watched that they cut their streams up, and I thought that was so weird. But this person goes for eight hours, nine hours, ten hours. Well, also, I mean, YouTube has something funny if you go more than twelve hours, but I don't pay for that much. I'd have to do two streams after four hours. <laughs> I'm that person. I am that person because I'm more interested in the machine working, especially if it's non-operable. I will geek out and I want the machine to work and everything else. I'm literally throwing over my shoulder. Oh, don't know what that is. Don't need this. So I'm more efficient on the um, machines and not the attachments. <laughs> Liz, I don't know if you remember... Um, Three or four years ago, I did a 12-hour stream with Stool, with the British people. Yeah. 
12 hours. I and I and I remember how unfulfilled I felt after and it was like four in the morning and I was like, I just wasted my entire day. I will <laughs> never do this. I hated everyone I streamed with. Like I got into two fights. <laughs> I, I'd be cranky and hungry and tired after a while. Like sometimes I need a nap and sometimes I just need to like take a two hour bath. <laughs> oh, same. Same. I stand in the shower like this sometimes. Like I will pay this bill if this is worth it. Like I, I call them adult showers, and it's not even anything adult. It's just me standing there uninterrupted. With the whole <laughs> That's when I turn the bath on. Yeah. <laughs> What's your wow? Mine are really terrible machines. Like I want a brother VX eight oh nine again, just because it was. Um, it was an indestructible machine that I destroyed. <laughs> I don't know. That's a really good question. Do you have a um, holy? I want a Juki. I want a table Juki, but I refuse to pay um, even four or five thousand dollars for one. I know that's in my. Yeah. I don't know. And I don't know if I know enough to be able to say, I mean, I love my white rotary hand crank. She's a dream, an industrial straight stitch machine, maybe, but I basically have that. I just have to nod off my ends and do stuff. Cause it doesn't have a reverse feature, but you know, we work with what we got. Oh man. My signal is bad. I guess Starlink also is bad sometimes. It's laggy and drops out. That makes sense. Killer it. I don't know how you did a 12-hour gaming stream. I'm sure it was rough towards the end. What games do you like to play? I'm not a gamer, <laughs> but I'm curious. Uh, no, I'm so I so curious. I know. I don't remember that we were kind of going, doing different things back then. It sounds awful. <laughs> No, no, you were there, Liz. <laughs> I have an identic memory. And because of YouTube, um, every once in a while, I go back and look to judge my the cringy things I said two or three years ago. And I laugh at myself. And I'm like, I want to see how much weight I've gained or lost. I, I forget how skinny I was because I gained 50 pounds over the COVID thing. And I'm still skinny. I was like 160 something pounds. I gained 50 pounds over uh, COVID from stress eating. That's kind of a lot in a short period of time. I, 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 I sat here. I stressed out. I tuned out the world and I just started eating food all day. I was like, Isaiah, let's make a cake for no reason. <laughs> let's, let's make mashed potatoes. I, you know, I, I got real gourmet with it, but yeah. I and, and I gained the weight in an unhealthy way because I gained it rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, me too. I my family, I, my siblings love to play, love video games. I I just never got into it, but I think I played violin, so I had a thing that I did with my hands and my eyes. It just wasn't playing video games. <laughs> I played the violin. I played the violin all the way up to junior high, and then I quit. I quit Boy Scouts and the violin because you get beat up for both. <laughs> no, I made it all the way almost to my junior year of university with my degree in music. <laughs> wow. I always wonder about that. Like, I always wonder about that. Boy Scouts, the, I, I, that was a good thing I let go of that. But, like, um, I could still pick a fiddle up and play to this day. I saw an industrial singer embroidery machine. I saw one... One that makes stars. I want one so bad. I really wanted a white 651. Found one on offer up with cans and attachments. Got a Wilcox and Gibbs with modern attachments. I want one of those. I call it the stereotypical um, YouTuber sewing machine. It's the Juki with the table. Yeah. I want one so bad. There's an Australian YouTuber I watch. I I, I um. My brain is fried right now, but um, she makes purses. <laughs> but she has a giant green oh, sewing machine. No, I can't she, remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just. Oh my god, what is her name? So legit. Her, yes, I'm still subscribed to her. Um, 
I want to know what kind of sewing machine she has. I need to look that up because I bet I could it, easily I, find out. It's that same Juki, and she had it painted that green or shellac, oh. that green color custom after That's she awesome. it used to be white. Do I have my eye on one in particular? No, I I um, pride myself on the fact that like I've built my empire on my um, Husqvarna Viking and used sewing machines. And I um I don't know. I I would feel weird spending that much money on a sewing machine. And if I do, I'm gonna buy an embroidery machine and um, start a business. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that ten thousand dollar ten stitch baby lock Ventura. That how does Sostein have baby lock sponsor her and give? She has two of them, and one of them, I think, is on a brand sponsorship deal. I'm like, please, please do all the likey YouTubey rumbly social media things because I want this fucking sewing machine. <laughs> Oh, I think it is a con. It might be a con, Sue. It might be. I like Fallout, Fallout Cities, Skylines, GTA, Saints Row, Unreal Tournament 1999, Tropico, and some other games I can't remember. Okay, um, I know Kill GTA, Lord. Grand Theft Auto. That one I know that three letter acronym. I don't, <laughs> I don't know which version it is. Whatever version Isaiah plays, the LA map that's on gta is los angeles it is it's the creepiest thing to me it is the creep it creeps me out you turn the corner and you can see the buildings and everything i can't even sit in the same room with him when he plays the game sometimes when he's on the freeway i'm like don't go on the off ramp <laughs> <laughs> there might be cars there it is LA. It's LA. It trips me out. And they even have like the unincorporated parts, like my town. You know, it's tri it's tri it's tri trippy. So they I can really learn how to it. drive there by playing this game, but I'm not going to spend the money for this setup. <laughs> <laughs> it's trippy. As someone who actually lived in LA, like I lived in a place where you could look up and see the stereotypical downtown buildings. So when I see that in a video game, it just reminds me of my 20s. It trips me out. Viking was my favorite uh, sewing machine. I have to, the, Water Nate, this is so true. I want to make lots of videos so that I can get a well mattress and some linen sheets too. Yes. Yes, please. Brick linen and. <laughs> I can't think of the other company sponsor. <laughs> yes. When I first started, when I first started, I used to say Husqvarna Vikings so much that everybody was like, those people need to sponsor you. And then when people started watching my videos, they're like, dude, you own more Singer sewing machines than people who are sponsored by Singer. <laughs> right. I'm a Singer I, geek. I know. Well, it's funny because I actually do have affiliate links. I just... I used to promote them a lot, but when nobody watched me and now that people watch me, I like feel bad, but there are some brands like that I actually don't hate and have affiliate links for in my description areas. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh too much playing double like so funny story. I have a Nintendo 64 and I thought I I um I have 007. I practiced for like three or four months because you're rusty. You know, you think, oh, I was an expert as a kid. No, you're rusty. So I called my kid in one day. I was like, all right, I'll be odd jump. You can be 007. I'm going to smoke you. That kid killed me within 15 seconds. It, <laughs> it was so fun. He's, he's like, I'm bored of killing you. And he walked out of the room. <laughs> That's, oh, oh, my God. Oh, we used to, what game did we used to play? I, oh, I have games like that. I'm terrible. That would give me anxiety, Waternay. Someone playing the game without doing any crimes. I'd be like, do something. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Brother and a dispensary to sponsor Godless. <gasps> that would yes. be uh, a Christmas. <laughs> right. Brother sewing. I already have my speech ready and everything. <laughs> <laughs> we can be the Godless Brother. Uh, um, I look at who's who singer sponsors 
I'm not. They're like wearing flower dresses and they talk like this and they're so sweet. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like if you go look on Singer's official site, like they have some real lilies who are there who are sponsored by Singer. <laughs> and when I say lily, I mean like they are like debutante, white glove, like even Levi um, has this guy, he has dreads, he's in a New York studio, and he does San Cisco. You should actually look up Levi on YouTube. They actually have some really good videos. Non-sponsored, non-sponsored. <laughs> Somebody but get you could. <laughs> You never know. You never know. I've watched, um, there was a YouTuber, I won't say her name, but I watched her when she had a hundred, um, subs and now she's a famous youtuber who um drives um both sides crazy <laughs> good job it's blair white i she lived in hollywood before she was famous and i and like oh. i knew her when she wasn't and like yeah. it's weird to me to watch like she literally used to walk around hollywood boulevard no just like I everybody else <laughs> right and now she's back in texas and uh, seems like a straight shooting human but la like if if you change your political views la is not a place to live like la is a very liberal city like uh, most sewing channels are way too <laughs> that's why um like um ruan i am so shocked yeah. that she watched this that like that like she's that she um what's it called that she reciprocates when i write on her channel because there are certain youtubers i've learned there's people that i follow i comment on their live stream and they they x out my comment because of my name and people don't like godless I, I said this i used to watch this guy about con, um ancient kinetic spirituality maybe i wanted to learn about egypt he literally went off about my name. And I'm like, bro, I've been watching you for a year and you're yelling at me. <laughs> you don't even know me. <laughs> there are a lot. So, like, uh, that is real. There are. And, you know, there was a guy. Um, I can't remember his name. But there's a video that says, if you're going to start a, a YouTube sewing channel. And he kind of said it. And it's kind of true. I think this guy's lame. But this is a true sentence. Unless you're really into it, sewing is boring. It's true. <laughs> so you have to spice it up. I'll tell you, I grew up around men who golfed. Okay? Obsessed. They lived golf. My grandfather lived near a golf course. I hate golfing. <laughs> it's not my thing. It's not my thing. I like driving the golf car. <laughs> You know, but like, so you so you really have to be into it. I like her one. If that's excuse me, I absolutely love Yorkshire So Girl. I but there's a bunch. I watch a bunch of weird um um. So it's from the UT from the UK. Cornelius? No, I don't. But I will look that person up right now. Oh, duh, at my job, we still have, we have golf carts, and I let my son drive, and it's like, uh, I put a helmet on. I put a helmet on. Golf carts are fun. They're not for the faint of heart, though. My son took down a chain link fence, and he looked at me, and I was like, oh, I'm the boss, so keep going. Keep going. <laughs> my machines also like this. Yep. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I am obsessed with sewing. So, yeah. so it's, I love it. I watch, I watch people in factories. I don't speak Korean. I follow three or four channels of people in Korea that sew. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do not need to spice things up with nasty sewing conspiracies and fights. <laughs> I don't need that drama in my life. <laughs> That's the one thing I like about the sewing community is that they're less drama. Because if you have... Oh. That's not true, though. There's the whole Catherine Hay appropriation <laughs> of that stupid Worth uh -oh. gown, the peacock gown that, like, everybody was hating her on and Foundations Revealed, like, was getting Liam basted. And <laughs> there's this, like, that is oh, God, that was a whole debacle. 
I know. Um, I will end this at five hours. But where is your line with cultural appropriation? Because I said this in my video, and because I'm so westernized, I don't know where the line is anymore. Like, I don't. See, and I, I concur with that a thing. I've also come to this place over time that I feel I know where my ancestral culture is to the pretty well. And I feel like it's important to keep track of your, if you know where you, where you came from, or maybe you've been here so long enough that you're just here and that's okay. But yeah. I'd like to honor my culture where I came from because it's mine. And I, we, it's like not good omens. Um, The Neil Gaiman book, American gods, like the old gods that we brought with us like to be remembered. So I, honoring my ancestors i'm i'm like that too see that's that's the thing like i honor my ancestors even if i don't believe necessarily what they did so i'm, right. I'm into that too like i know like my dad a lot of his old songs and stuff he passed down he he learned in the church i can hit a golf ball around a corner they start flying off straight and curved and they go further right and then travel straight <laughs> Acknowledgement and also not, also not something that is a thing that's directly initially exploitive. I did that without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I can read. I just can't read from far away. Do you know I got yelled at by my mother? I by my closer to the words. <laughs> my, my, I. I got in the car with my glasses on and she's like, do you know if you wore your glasses 20 years ago, you wouldn't have to wear them now because she's speaking the truth. Because she was there when the doctor told me 30 years ago if I wore my glasses. Gosh, I was in the fifth grade 35 years ago <laughs> the doctor told me. Stop dating yourself. Wear... Just make it 40 and we'll round up. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, it? it um, those memes are so cruel when someone's like, 1999 was 24 years ago. Have a good day. And I'm like, go stuff yourself. <laughs> no, Twitter's 20 years ago was 1960. Go fuck off. No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I might like golf. I don't know, though. I wouldn't like the money you have to spend on it. <laughs> and then again, I say, you know what? Um, <laughs> it's true. I think about that the other day. I did this like. Um, I was gonna buy one of those, one of those, um, those gray Singer sewing machines that no, everybody tells me not oh, to. Oh, right, okay? the yes, the it, it's, yeah. So they're two hundred bucks. On that same day, I said I'm not gonna do it. I went out and spent the equivalent of two hundred bucks on food, life, dispensary, and fabric. So theoretically, I could have just bought the machine and shut up in the first place. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't, though. I'm so glad I didn't. I'm so glad. Jesus Christ Superstar is one of the greatest shows ever. May the Crystal Cathedral live forever. I don't care. You know what? Some people call it a gay awakening or whatever. I loved that stupid show. When I was a kid, Joseph in the Technicolor Coat was amazing. That was an amazing show. <laughs> to my birth <laughs> I know. I had that same thing the other day. I was like, no, I didn't used to have to scroll so far back. <laughs> the start of MTV is closer to Pearl Harbor than today. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna end this in a minute or two. I just like um phoenix you 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 lasted almost five hours you know <laughs> i i go full elvis and you know what's well, really funny this this weekend um because i'm trying to explain to isaiah what mutton chops are because he calls them muffin chops he's cute. He's a <laughs> muffin chops for life bro he's like my muffin chops i said say that again 
muffin chops. I said, I love muffin chops, but they're mutton chops. So we watched an Elvis documentary and it was cocaine fat Elvis with the big mutton chops. And he's like, look, Elvis has mutton chops. I said, bro, that was 1970. Elvis was rich and on cocaine. Sh shave your chops. <laughs> Oh, I'm over the facial hair. Does that make me a hypocrite? Because I looked like Shaggy when I was that age. But they're just different stages. I am more of, I like the clean cut look. But I also want him to, like, know who he is and explore, like, okay, maybe I can't grow facial hair. Maybe I can, you know. Right, right. You you won't know. and He won't know unless he, you, he tries. Exactly. And that, that's the thing. <laughs> Night, Liz. <laughs> is yes. Back yes, when I was watching MTV. Do you know, um, it, it makes me feel old, but I remember when MTV really didn't even have commercials. It was no. just music videos. And then, and then um, Remote Control was their first like television show they had. And then it was all just countdown shows. Yeah. And then... You know how I'm really aging myself. Stop the shenanigans. Actually, I think there's I would... food burning in my kitchen. <laughs> All right, I'll end it here. Do you have anything you'd like to shill? I'll do my YouTube. I thing. will be back on the YouTubes and the Rumbles on Sunday at 3 30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, whatever that works out into your lo local jurisdiction. I can't figure that out for you. <laughs> That's why I like uh, the the group that we're in because everybody's on the West Coast. <laughs> right. That does help. I appreciate you all. You were all amazing. And it's been fun. And I'm taking a handstand class for the next three weeks on Monday. So I will be late. <laughs> Did you say handstand? Yes. Oh, Wow. That's it. That's something for like I couldn't do that. It's Mutton chops are amazing. Think, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I have a video out right now. Everybody should go check it out. Um, excuse me. I will be streaming next Monday. Please do not forget to go check out Phoenix. We will all be there next Sunday. Um. I hope everybody has a great night. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, you make Mondays worth the, uh, you know, I look forward to this time of this time of day, my five hour streams. <laughs> you guys, except for me when it's two AM. <laughs> you guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you, Dove, for making a special guest appearance this evening. <laughs> Handstands are rad. And like I always say, reinforce your scenes, be yourself. And I will definitely, definitely see you next time. <laughs>